podcast. <laughs> you listen to Kendrick and Matt on the Slip and Dip podcast. Oh, beautiful, man. What is up, people? Welcome back to the Slip and Dip Podcast, episode 125, coming to you on the heels of a pretty packed, relatively packed combat sports weekend. I am Matthew Wells. Across the country, all the way up in New York, is Kendrick Johnson, sitting in the boiler room next to mankind. <laughs> 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 yeah, man, what's, what's, uh, what's been going on? I know you're out there co- covering the Charlo fight, so uh, how was all that? All that madness? I saw, saw, saw Charlo, Charlo do Charlo, Charlo things with a brutal stoppage of Dennis Hogan. Damn, that was crazy. Man. Mankind's in there, right? I'm telling you. <laughs> no, the, the, the crazy thing is, uh, up in this part of the world, they have like like deer that be like in the street where I'm staying at in my cousin's neighborhood. It's like, man, Rudolph just chilling in your front yard. He's like, that's what they do out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like four or five of them. Like, how do you take a picture? Like, it's crazy. Wow. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, the fight, the fight itself. Uh, Charlo obviously got got the job done. Uh, I mean, I don't think but, anybody uh, expects anything less, right? No, it was a, it was a showcase fight, but he basically is turned into the Terrence Crawford of uh, PBC. He has uh, good, he wants to fight the best. There's nobody in his division on his side of the street that to get all that politics worked out. So he's kind of caught in the middle. So it's like, yeah, he's good, but he had fight nobody. But it's not lack of him trying. And of course, he went ghetto Charlo mode. I'll fight anybody anywhere. That's what I do, and all that stuff. But the main fight I'm in here is actually this week coming up. It's the it's the it's the Terrence Crawford card. He's the main eventer. But the fight I'm looking forward to seeing is Teofimo Lopez and Richard Kume, and the winner will get a belt for the first time in their career. Well, Teofimo will get his first belt. So uh, it's gonna be any time I go to Madison Square Garden, craziness happens. So I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it to that standard. Nice, nice. So uh, on today's show, episode 125, we have Justin Buckles returning to the program, good friend of the show, and Jake Donovan, uh, boxing from boxing. What's the what's the website? Boxing scene. <laughs> boxing, boxing scene. scene, senior writer. Boxing scene, senior writer of boxing scene. It's, it's late, people. I'm sorry, um, but yeah. Uh, so those are our two guests this week. Uh, really great, really great conversations we have with both those gentlemen. We we'll get to those in just a second. Uh, one big fight that went down this weekend that we'll touch on real quickly is uh, Anthony Joshua got all the belts back to the surprise of virtually nobody nope. <laughs> when you consider <laughs> all of the things Andy Ruiz was doing, partying too much, came in overweight, doing all the things everybody said that was going to cost him. And then after the fact, he was like, yeah, I was partying too much. I came in overweight. <laughs> like, yeah, we know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> It's crazy that he didn't get like stars like Buster Douglas. People compare to him. Buster Douglas got like smoked like in the third or fourth round by Holyfield. Yeah. And the fact that he came back, he came back at his moment. Yeah, he did all that, but he did go twelve rounds with quote unquote the heavyweight champion of the world. Right. He never really got hurt. Really. He just he just got beat to the punch by by a more in shape focused guy. Yeah. It's uh it's one of those things. It's it didn't surprise anybody, man, because. Joshua came in laser focused, got got the job done, did what he had to do. Like he wasn't in there to, to trade punches; he was in there to win rounds and made sure he walked away with those belts, and that's what he did. So good on him. But yeah. well, the boxing people, they they they. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna give them the emoji. Why? What's so cool about losing our belt and getting our ass beat and coming back? He's a real champion now. He's a two time. He regained it. So you need to get your ass beat. Lose all what you worked for your whole career and get it back to be a real champion. What kind of sense does that make? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's. I guess it's a talking point that people want to go to. But he's a he's certified now. AJ got his belts back. He a two time champion. He's certified. How about not getting your ass knocked out in uh, Madison Square Garden? That's the real question. I, I'm gonna start asking lots of people starting this week. And next thing you know, I'm cool with my man Eddie Hearn. Will AJ come back to America as my man? Uh, uh, shout out to man Eddie Hearn. Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully, hopefully it does for the Wilder fight, which hopefully takes place before the end of summer twenty twenty. Hopefully, I got I got a lot of hot football people that ain't gonna happen at all. Less known in twenty twenty, it's crazy. Boxing and unboxing, I guess. 
Yeah. <laughs> you don't got to know Dana say you going to effing fight whether you like it or not. That's what that's what you need a Dana White coming. <laughs> exactly. Speaking of Dana White, UFC had a card. They had a card out in DC. Alistair Overeem and Jarzinho Rosenstruck put on a relatively yeah, boring I like fight. The stuff. Relatively boring fight until 4 seconds left and my man Alistair Overeem got his wig split quite literally. His <laughs> lips split at least. <laughs> just nasty nasty man the, the way his lips split on that punch I have never seen anything like that before in my life it's just madness cause it was like on why was it a boy in fight though what's that why, why people say it was a boy in fight you saw what happened when he engaged yeah, it, he almost had his head took off it, it was one of those fights where you understood the game plan but you're not gonna watch it back you know it, it, well, okay. I wouldn't say it was necessarily boring but it's not a fight I'm gonna go back to and be like oh man let me pull that, that fight again <laughs> the way his lips split on that punch, man, that was just crazy. And then <laughs> Alistair just shows you what type of dude Alistair is because he was laughing about it, like after the fact. Like that's that's a special breed of human right there to be laughing about getting your lip lip split open like that. I, it's cool. The guy, I, I like him. I don't want to say his last name. Rosenstruck. Yeah, Rosenstruck. He, he has. Well, it's it's like one of. So how old is he? Um, I don't know how old he is. I don't know. Well, it's like, it, I get the vibe of him. It's like he started the sport too late to be like make a serious run. Like he might get a title shot, but I don't see him getting more than a title shot. Maybe. I mean, if he keeps knocking dudes' blocks off like this, he could be like that second coming of Francis and Ghana to find himself in a title fight real quick. He, he, they, they, they're saying if he fights in Gano and and Gano's in Gano, he will get one. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be the way to go. I mean, I would like to see the fight, honestly. I would like, I would love to see it. I just don't want it to be another Derek right, Lewis. I hear him and Derek Deuce. <laughs> that's weird because the, like Derek Lewis did what he had to do. Who who who, is, who else has stood in front of Francis Nagano and made him not throw punches though? True. Like to me, it's like it's like people, like nobody talks about that, but they like talking about them basically feigning. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I haven't seen just, for instance Nagano trigger shot on anybody else even Stipe even though he lost he wasn't trigger shot <laughs> that's true that's true but yeah uh, you so, think Rosenstruck struck strike knock him out what's that it was a struck knock him out can, go can he can he I don't know uh, we haven't seen Nganu hurt really like that I mean he stood in there he uh, took all the punishment from Stipe and still standing to talk about it after the fact I don't know I don't know. It'll be a hell of a fight, just as long as he just didn't end up being, like I said, another Derek Lewis and Ganu fight. That's all. That's all I hope for. But uh, also on that card, uh, Cynthia Calvillo and Marina Marina Rodriguez fought to a draw, and we have Justin Buckles to talk about that. So we won't dive into that fight. We we go deep on that. Um, deep. <laughs> yeah, but there's a lot of other stuff, just weirdness that went on on this card, man. The Ben Rothwell Stephen Strew fight was weird with all the, the nut kicks. <laughs> And, and Dan Mirgulada doing things he wasn't supposed to do, like coaching Stefan Struve on who he thought was winning the fight. Like, you can't do that. You cannot do that. <laughs> the, the, what, what, I've heard nobody else talk about that. Is there people mad about that? Yeah, yeah people are talking about it. There's articles all over the place about it. Um, yeah, you're not supposed to do that as a referee. Like, when. Because ha- for people that didn't know or that missed it, here's what happened Dan Mirgulada, after the, the groin shot in the second round, where Stefan Struve folded up, told Stefan Struve that, hey, you know, this is going to be um, a no contest if the fight's over right here, and I think you're winning right now. I think you're winning the fight. And not a direct quote, but I'm paraphrasing what he was saying. He, ba- he was basically telling him, I think you're winning the fight, you know, if you continue or whatever, whatever. Stefan Struve continues, and then he gets knocked out. <laughs> But, but what was he winning the fight though? That's the real. That's the real question. Was he winning the fight? I don't know. Uh, the cards are out there, but I don't. I don't have them available just yet. But yeah, that's just a weird moment. Then Aspen Lad came he, out, yeah. and knocked her, knocked Yana Kuniskaya's block off real quick in the third round after being, I don't know, pretty lackluster in the first two rounds. And then got that fiery speech from her coach, and then that got everybody fired up on social media. That was pretty cool. Why, 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 why people are high on her? Like, I know she has a nice record, but, like, I don't know. I, I'm not going to say I'm not impressed. I've actually seen her train. She's like, she reminds me of somebody that's a really good fighter, 
Not that I don't want to be like Floyd. <laughs> not special, no special effects. Mm-hmm. But I don't see her being a future champion. It's like she's just another lady. I can agree. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. I mean, I think she still has room to improve, but right now, I'm not, I'm not seeing that whole game complete yet. I'm gonna put it that way. You know. Yeah, it's like it's, 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 she's lacking something to be in Bantam way. It's like, do you see her doing what she do to the men the new days? Um, no. Okay, I can keep on moving. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So um, let's uh, get ready to hit up these conversations with our two guests. Um, before we get to that, I want to get touch on a couple things. Hey, go check out the video I dropped on the channel for Jeff Neal um, inside the camp. Basically a few minutes. It's not a long video, although I do hope to do more of these in the future. That will be a little bit longer, um, more in depth. But it gives you a little bit behind the scenes peek of what it's going, what's going on training over there at Fortis MMA, as he gets to gets ready to fight Mike Perry this weekend. So check that out. Also, hit up the merch store. We got the merch link in the description below. Grab yourself a hoodie. I'm rocking the hoodie right now. Hey, let me show you guys on the camera. So you can see the quality of this thing. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. The pockets are nice. It's got like those hoodie pockets that actually almost like pockets. You know what I'm saying? Nice quality, nice thick hood at the top. I love it. I love it. I'm glad I got one. And uh, you should grab yourself one too. It's nice and warm, nice and toasty in this these cold winter months. You need to stay warm out there, people. <laughs> you need to stay warm. So grab yourself a hoodie. And you know what? If you think the hoodie game too thick, if you think it's too thick, you don't want to be all hot and sweaty, just pick up a t-shirt. Kendra's rocking a t-shirt. Pick up the t-shirt. And we got multiple colors. You know, just, just go ahead and grab yourself one. If you like the blue, if you like the pink, they're all there for you. We got options. <laughs> we'll take care of you in the merch <laughs> store. So go check that out. And, of course, hit that subscribe button on YouTube if you haven't already. Give us a thumbs up on this video. And uh, if you're listening on the audio side on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review to help the visibility out. We would appreciate that as well. So anything else before we get to these, these talks, Kendrick? No, man, I'm coast to coast out. The first, uh, the first, co- first coast to coast slip and dip, co- slip and dip podcast. We hit you from the east to the central to the west coast time zone, and that's 100 percent fact. 100, 100, 100. We'll do it again next week too, right? Or no, you'll be back in town. Nah, I'll be, week, I'll be back in town. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be in, on, in on the plane so you're, and back to detail. You're back in studio. Right in time to watch the Cowboys debacle. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Literally, I get up to play right when the Cowboys kick off. <laughs> Talk- I left after they the got their tails beat, <laughs> and not- then I get back away when they play, play the game. It's we're not, crazy. We're not talking about the Cowboys right now. We're gonna we're gonna get you into this interview with Justin Buckholz right now. It's what we're gonna do. So enjoy that, and then <laughs> enjoy Jake Donovan after that. Peace. Please welcome back to the Slip and Dip Podcast, friend of the show, one of the best trainers in the MMA game today. Well-renowned podcaster, <laughs> got his own gym going up in Sac- Sacktown, Mr. Justin Buckholz, fresh off that crazy fight last night in the corner, Cynthia Calvillo. How y'all came down on that? How, how do you look at that? Because that's like a not a win, but it's not a loss. Like how y'all, how y'all seen Calvillo taking last night's uh, results? Man, that was a tough one, but uh, you know, I, I watched the fight after, and the scoring was pretty accurate. I feel like she won the first two rounds, and then Cynthia won the last round, ten eight. So, I mean, a lot of people complain about a draw, but I thought that was pretty accurate. I, I, feel, I feel like they have unfinished business and they need to settle it. You know, I think, I think they should run that back and, uh, you know, give Cynthia enough time to make, make the weight properly or do it at 125. They could do that next week, you know, if they want to do it then. But I don't, I don't think she should be down for that. But uh, I feel like they have unfinished business. Yeah. After this. I mean, it was a draw. It was a battle. I mean, it was a, it was a skirmish and – that yeah, was drawn both sides, but they need to finish the war, you know? Oh, 100%. So l- let's start with what you touched on there with the weight, because that's what everybody wants to know about. So what, what happened there, and what was the, what was the issue with the, with the scale this time around? Man, the thing is, is <laughs> it's a lot different for females, you know what I oh. mean? And I, I never really understood that until uh, I had to go through this with Cynthia. And, you know, she was premenstrual again. And she told the UFC PI and we had Charles and stuff trying, trying to work on it. But it's just the body just doesn't release that weight. and It kind of just cooks her. And, you know, it, it was a tough situation. But, I mean, 
I, I feel I feel like the weight what was if if it was a factor it was it was definitely against Cynthia because we were stressed out the whole week trying to cut that it was more br- it was as brutal as anything and and uh, I mean she started the weight cut the night before at three p.m. and then took a break at twelve thirty a.m. Uh, had about a three hour nap and then I woke her up at five a.m. and we went all the way till the weigh-in which was at eleven you know just trying to cook her and she was at the point where she couldn't even walk you know and I had a I really had to make the call whether we just stop and try to keep the fight intact or I send her to the hospital. And I have sent girls to the hospital before, so <laughs> I didn't want to do that, you know. And that's that's kind of the worst case scenario. I mean, uh, the girl Marina, it was a draw, so they get their show money, but Marina got an extra 15K. She almost got her show and win money, so she should be happy. I mean, it's like this. If you, if you give – if you give Cynthia the option to have Marina have be four pounds over and give her 15 grand, 20 grand for that, she's taking that deal anytime. We're prize fighters. We fight for money. You know what I mean? So there ain't no weight class in the streets. It's band weight, straw weight, <laughs> fly weight. I don't give a damn. You know, let, let, the, let the girls fight. Four pounds, what is that? A half gallon of water, that's going to make the difference? Like, you know what I mean? Here's the thing. Marina didn't make any excuses her whole career. She don't need to be making excuses now saying that, I mean, if she would, if she would have beat Cynthia, there wouldn't have been a problem, you know, but now all of a sudden the weight is why she got her, you know, face disfigured on the ground. Like that, that's got nothing to do with it. Yeah. I mean, first, first we have to be professional. We have to make the weight. That was our bad. Uh, but uh, of course we accept our responsibility, but people need to get over that, man. It's like an obsession right now. And I mean, when someone misses weight, they just, everyone gets all crazy. <laughs> The thing with, you know, and like I said, it's different with women. It is. And all these keyboard warriors who write stuff, they don't, they don't have a clue. They can't even, they can't even you know, they, can, they can't stop drinking a Mountain Dew for one day. And they're going to come in here and criticize professional athletes. You know what I mean? So uh, I ain't trying to hear all that. Yeah, Whoa. I didn't understand the quote that Marina threw out there after the fight where she was like, you know, that I really felt that four, four and a half pound difference. Like, first off, how, how, like, okay, first of all, I would kind of give some credit to that quote if Cynthia was four and a half pounds heavier than she normally is on fight night okay I'd give her a little bit of I'd understand it a little bit but second of all how do you know what Cynthia feels like period at any weight like that that part of it doesn't make any sense to me like exactly you don't, you don't know what she feels like at 115 you don't know what she feels like at 130 like you don't know because you never fought her before that, that four pounds was more detrimental to Cynthia, what she had to go through and, and everything else, uh, uh, trying to cut that weight. I think the unofficial weight uh, fight night, she was 129. I'd like to see the stats on that compared to her other fights. That's no different than, than before, you know what I mean? It's not like she was like 145 or blew up huge or something, you know? So uh, I, just, I think that's just a bunch of malarkey, but I would like to, I'd like to see those two girls get after it again. And I think, uh, I think this time it should be a grudge match because they had some stinky attitudes going into it. And the, and the thing is, Cynthia has been on the, the other side of a fighter miss weight. Joanne Calderwood missed weight in Scotland. And she came up, told Cynthia she missed weight. I think Cynthia gave her a hug. You know what I mean? It's tough. It's tough for these girls. Like they just have a menstrual cycle. So it's not, it's not, it's not men fight, man. I really learned that, you know, <laughs> <laughs> tell me this. How, how, is it just, that's what they do. Is it when y'all can close the gap on the striking on the feet? Or you think there's any way she can make any difference on the ground? Or Cynthia's really great at what she do, and she's really good at what she do. And it's, it's, we see whose style wins. Like, how do y'all change something different if there is a rematch, say, five, six months from now? Man, I, I, think, uh, I think Cynthia went through a lot of adversity in this camp. She relocated to Thailand. I didn't really – my gym wasn't open. That, I mean, that's tough. It's not like she was training at Tiger Muay Thai and did an eight-week camp. She went out there. For eight weeks, relocated in a different country. You know what I mean? That's just just a tough a tough thing to deal with. She came back three weeks, and and we we did we really did the best we can. But the the level of training and game plan and 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 everyone says this every camp is tough. Well, her camp was especially tough. You know what I mean? I've seen her camps before. That was especially tough. So I'm super proud of her for coming back in that third round and getting that draw with that. I mean, she was this close to a finish, this close to a finish. Uh, Yamasaki was about to jump in, but. Uh, he, he didn't jump in right there. He was about to jump in. I was looking right at his face. I was like, stop the fight, stop the fight. But, <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't, he wasn't just me, but uh, you know, if you look at the fight uh, over, over uh, pride scoring, like the entire fight, like I, I rewatched the fight right after it. And uh, Marina, she won rounds one and two. I give her 10, nine, one and two. But For sure. if you look at the 
punch stats. I think Marina landed 47 significant strikes to Cynthia's 150. You know what I mean? Look at their faces oh. after the fight. Look at their faces after the fight. If you have a three, uh, you know, a third grader judge who won, Cynthia won the fight. She don't got a scratch on her. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying she won, you know what I mean? There, there, there was props in camp. We, we missed the weight and all this other stuff. But if you look at the punch stats, you sure as hell would say Cynthia won. You know what I mean? She did all that damage in one round. So she, she uh, and to answer your question, Kendrick, approaching the fight uh, again, it's I feel like there's a lot of things that Cynthia just was off a little bit on and kind of got off her game in, in, in a certain areas and, and she can perform so much better. And I would like to see that happen. I'd like to see uh, Rodriguez and Calvillo part two, the grudge match. You know what I mean? The first time it was top 10 fight. Now let's do a grudge match, man. I mean, these girls don't like each other and uh, I'd like to see them settle it. You know, I, I want to see Cynthia uh, send her home to Brazil, her and her whole camp. Two, two, two part question did the, the, the powers to be the big manager and Sean Shelby's did they mentioned that and then two I know you and Cynthia are close on a personal level how crazy is it to see her have to go because nobody wants to see their people get through adversity but she ate them them body kicks like a champ I was worried that last I won't say last minute of the second round that was like that's the most I've seen her hurt and then she recovered like a champ but it's like how does it just go through that? Because, of course, you don't want to see your athlete in that position, but to see her go through that and then come back and do what she did, that's what makes it even more crazy. Yeah, yeah I, I think the exact same thing. The You know, seeing her absorb some of those knees, they, they look bad from the corner, but the next day she didn't have a scratch on her. It, it was it was amazing. She's like, she like a young BJ Penn. You know how BJ Penn never got marked <laughs> up early in his career? That's like her. She don't, she don't get cut. You know, like when I fought, I'd get cut. I got That's the problem with having nice, like uh, – perfect skin you know it's not good for fighting just rips like uh paper but <laughs> you know she 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 doesn't get cut she doesn't bruise up and uh she's the ability to take those shots so i just told her after the fight imagine taking those shots you know if, if you take those shots and you land two or three in return you know true mexican style instead of uh being on defense or say backing away from the strikes let's go forward and land our own shots because man she was she hurt me to the body a bunch in that camp or uh, in the last three weeks that we had to train. She was she was hitting hard. And, uh, you know, the thing is when you get in there and, and Marina's undefeated for a reason. She's a tough style and she's she's tall and she's she's strong and she's wiry. But, uh, you know, it, it was a good fight. I'd like to see him finish it, you know. I'd really like to see them finish it. Yeah, 100%. And it was one of those, like, tale of two fights, really. Because, like you said, that, that, that third round was so dominant. And like you were saying a minute ago, like pride rule scoring. Yeah, like Cynthia would have walked away with it. Um, yeah. Were you surprised or was it like part of the game plan to not, you know, utilize the takedowns as early? Or, you know, what were what was, you know, you recapping that with Cynthia like? Well, in the in the first round, she did get her down two times, too. She shot twice and got, got two takedowns and then kind of got off her game in the second round. And we and we we see Marina do that in fights before where she she kind of got, uh, you know, woman handled on the ground in the first round and then come back hard in the second round. Uh, but then Cynthia came back harder in the third round. So so thank goodness for her grit, you know, and her determin term determination to do that. But. You know, I always I always get my, my buddies and stuff always tell me, oh, is Cynthia going to wrestle her? I say, hell yeah, we're going to wrestle. We'll wrestle anybody. You know what I mean? <laughs> if we can shoot it and take them down, not get need, do it in the fight, do it that night. You know, it's it's a it's a tough game, you know, and uh, to impose your will on someone else and hitting another, uh, you know, if you look at the NCAAs and, and high-level wrestling, they, nobody gets held down. You know what I mean? No one's getting held down and controlled. It's a takedown to a scramble to back up, and that's how you score the matches, you know, when you have two high level athletes like that, controlling someone on the ground is tough. But when she did get her down and she did get warmed up, you know what I mean? She she was she was ready to go. Her her cardio was was, was on point and uh you know, she put it on her. It's it's pretty hard to throw 150 punches in the third round, you know, but uh significant strikes and Cynthia did that. So, you know, she kinda got warmed up and uh and kinda started feel, feeling her groove going to that third round. She came out bouncing and moving and and uh you know, really, really put it on her. So, uh, you know, I, I want to see it again. I want to see rounds four, five, and six. I just want to. I think. I think looking in again here in like March or something, that'd be good. And, and if, if uh, uh, Marina wants to do it earlier, then let's do it at one twenty-five. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and if Marina wants to to pay Cynthia twenty grand for four pounds, we'll do it. We'll do that right now. You know what I mean? We don't gotta have the UFC involved. 
Marina can pay Cynthia twenty thousand dollars, and then Marina can weigh in at one twenty. We'll be fine with that. We'll take that twenty grand. You know what I mean? That's that's Marina's show and win purse. She got off Cynthia, so she should be happy. You know, everybody up here <laughs> for her. It's like, dude, you went home with your show and win, basically. You know what I mean? Because she's got to be on like about a fifteen and fifteen or a twenty and twenty, just coming off the contender two fights in. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, she took fifteen grand out of Cynthia's check. That's no joke, man. Yeah, we so. fight for months. You know what I'm saying? And you get twenty grand bonus on that at that level. That's man. If you're giving me five thousand dollar a pound, you can have ten pounds. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. So so, 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 the ESPN they didn't have the the they had y'all mic'd up last night, and I don't know if it was uh, Trevor Whitman or or Daniel Cormier, but they were talking about your interaction with Cynthia. So give us a replay because we saw the results. So what the hell you said at work because she looked like a new, uh, another fighter. So what did you tell her in that minute that changed her mentality and she came fired up? Man, I just kind of gave her some uh, some technical advice. I, I didn't like the way she was shooting her double leg. She was pulling out and getting caught in that clinch. You know, she had to blast all the way through or go to a single, you know. I explained that. And I told her, you know, we got to get this round big. This is the fight is this round. You got to win big. And and in the, in the moment – I thought the first round was closer. I thought we could have edged the first round getting on top twice. But after rewatching it, I scored it. I, I definitely scored it for Marina with uh, uh, her strikes. But, you know, that was, that's just Cynthia for you. She, she kind of knew what was at stake and, and went out there and took it to her and got her with a double and blasted through her, ended up on top. And, and uh, you know, that's when she landed 150 significant strikes because there wasn't much in, in rounds one and two you know what i mean i don't know what it was round by round but by the end of the fight i think it was 157 to 47 you know significant strikes she did all that damage in the third and uh marina's face is is uh you know she got kind of butchered up she's cut a little bit and her, her eyes are swollen and i like to see what she looks like today you know before we left uh uh dc we went to the washington monument and uh, the air and space museum and it didn't even look like cynthia was in a fight so you know, there's that. And, and people can say whatever they want, but, but that's, that's just kind of the way it is. Look at the numbers. Look at the way the fight went. And, and you can't go in there every time. It's just not a perfect camp. And she dealt with so much adversity, being in and out of the country, working with new coaches. And credit to Tiger Muay Thai and my boy George Hickman. He's one of the most underrated coaches out there. It was a pleasure to corner with him. And, uh, you know, I met him a, a few years ago out in Tiger Muay Thai. And he's since taken over as a head coach, and he's doing a great job out there. But he was in Cynthia's corner as well, and he's a he's a wrestling wizard, MMA wizard, and he's got a bunch of killers coming out of Tiger Muay Thai. And he's the main guy responsible for that. So big shout out to Hickman and Hickman Brothers Wrestling. Uh, but I, but just being in Cynthia's position, like a, a, a level of a, a, an athlete at her level, she shouldn't have to think too much about the camp. But going into a new place she had to schedule her admits all her training all this stuff meanwhile marina's got her tight team she's in there with one goal in mind trying to dethrone cynthia and, and whenever girls fight cynthia they step their game up by about 10 i don't know what what cynthia does to piss them <laughs> off but they really come hard but i just feel there's unfinished business and i like to see it and, and i don't like marina making the excuse oh uh, i'm not gonna fight someone who makes weight well how about this you know if cynthia doesn't doesn't make make the weight you can take her whole purse you know what I mean? Take her whole person. <laughs> because, look, if we show up and we don't make weight again, then we, you know, we're, we're blowing it. We we're completely blowing it. So it has to be a distant camp, but we got to give her enough time because, you know, she just needs that time. If, if Marina wants to do it immediately, let's go to 125. You know? There ain't no weight class in the streets. I don't give a damn about no flyweight, strawweight, whatever. You know? Let's go. Let's do that. Roy Jones Jr. <laughs> cruiser, cruiser, super cruiser, heavyweight. I don't give a damn. I'll fight them all. You know? And that's how I feel Cynthia's in the, in the, uh, uh, the women's division. So, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see it again. Yeah, it's kind of an unfortunate ending. I mean, with, with the draw, because it really... It's kind of hard to, you know, what, what are you going to do for, like, the matchmaking purposes if they don't do a rematch, you know? I agree with that. I mean, they're both in the top ten. What do they do? Just go their separate ways. They're going to run into each other again. And and I think DC was saying, too, he said Marina's game has been exposed by Cynthia because of that beat down of the round. I was like, I don't know if she really exposed it. That's just how good Cynthia is on the ground. You know what I mean? Because Marina been on the ground with these other girls. Tisha could not get her to the ground. You know, meanwhile, Cynthia takes her down three times and, and has, I think it was like six minutes of control time or something like that to zero control time. 
you know? So if you look if you look at the stats, like I said, if you look at the stats and you look at their faces, you would say Cynthia won the fight 100%. I'm not saying she, saying she, she got a draw, but it, it's definitely unfinished business. I'd like to see these two girls settle it. And you know me, I, there's not, not like more than five rounds in a main event. So, you know, let's do a grudge match. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> that was the crazy part for me is that, that just that quote that she was saying, like, I definitely felt that four and a half pounds. Like, you don't know. Like, I mean, if, if anything, I knew, like, Cynthia was going to have that advantage in that department in the fight. And just looking at her other fights, she looks like she's a lot heavier than she is just the way that she grapples. You know what I mean? You know, anybody that's taken a jujitsu class <clears throat> or that's ever rolled ever in life knows that somebody that's more skilled than you on the ground is going to feel 50 pounds heavier because they know where to apply pressure. They know how to keep you you know, uncomfortable on the ground. So to say she felt the four and a half pounds, I, I, almost, I laughed at that quote when I saw it. Yeah, I sure, is she sure she didn't feel the four pounds or the four and a half pounds? Like, what What are you talking about? She's just like kind of, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's a fight. It's a fight. And, of course, you need to be professional. You need to make weight. But, you know, since I, I've been more involved in women's MMA, man, my, my mind has changed about that. It, it, it's tough for these girls and, and some girls got it figured out, and and but the majority of them, you know, if they end up getting that menstrual cycle, man, that's just a bunch of stuff that I don't understand, and it's confusing to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's you look confused. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think any of us are qualified to speak any further on that topic. <laughs> you know, you guys should have Charles. I, 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 did, I, I did a thesis paper on it. it um, they they graduated from college, no bullshit. Oh my God. <laughs> I had to do a five phase space. That, that's like that's a true All story. Right, you're gonna need to produce that document. <laughs> <laughs> I, <think he> <laughs> I need to see that. <laughs> just to tell me this, you know, we don't we 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 do nothing but but real talk. Hashtag facts on the slip and dip. The whole thing with Paige, did that bother y'all? That people's like they reach it for stuff, and I, I cracked out personally from talking to you and how many people are alpha male. That's how I knew how good fifty it was, and people that went in the gym. Tell me what was happening. I laughed because y'all got your opportunity. I was like, y'all wait to drop that bomb. Because I remember what y'all told me. Because at the time, this is like circa 2016. So I'm like, really? And sure enough, all y'all from the people still at Alpha Male to you and my guy that's outside the gym were right when I'm comparing those two fighters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, the the most frustrating part that a part about that whole thing, the PVZ and Cynthia thing was people kept saying, Oh, Cynthia, why are you bringing up page? Why are you talking about page? It's like, they were questioning Cynthia on that. The original article, they were asking Cynthia about page and she just responded. She's like, and then you had another interview where they asked her a more follow-ups. She said, listen, don't put page in, in the same, same uh, category as me. Just don't put her name with my name, you know? And people were saying, Oh, you're hating on page. You're hating on page. It's like, dude, they asked the questions two or three weeks prior to, I don't know. I don't know which media sources were to to the fight. Then fight week, every quote she said about Paige just started come out on their Instagram and cause this whole hornet's nest. And and that's kind of you know that's what the media media out there be doing. But uh, you know it, it it is what it is. I will see when Paige goes back to one fifteen. If they can fight, that'd be fantastic. You know, Cynthia and could settle this business with Marina. Hopefully, Paige gets to win. Maybe maybe one more fight each put them on the ultimate fighter you know you want to see you think cody and tj had some drama we'll have cynthia and page on the on tough or something for some straw weights that'd be nuts you know <laughs> but Paige is also I I, I think her last contract or her last fight or something like that she's i think i think it's, she's on her last fight that she's gonna go try to get some mega bucks at one fc or something yeah that, that would be the move for her i think because it just doesn't seem like uh, a title run in the UFC is a possibility. So, I mean, just cash out like you were saying. Hey, we're prize fighters, so get the bag, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just saying. I mean, there's no slight at her, but I'm just saying, like, hey, make some smart business moves here. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, we're doing it. You know, you got to go do your job, and your job is to fight, you know? Fight for money. That's what the best trainer, Master Tom, would always say. We fight for money. You know what I mean? Don't get it twisted. <laughs> I love martial arts. This is the most fun thing ever. I was like, you think Overeem's having fun right now? You know what I mean? He got he got eight hundred eight hundred thousand dollars for the, to get his 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 lip ripped off his face, and Anthony Joshua gets eighty five million dollars. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's MMA is fun, martial arts is fun, lifestyle, all that stuff, and then then you can 
have your uh, orbital bone broken, you have your jaw broken, you know what I mean? You can lose teeth. You, serious, serious stuff. So it's 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 it, it's fun. The training, the lifestyle is fun, but there's serious consequences if you if so, if something get something goes wrong in there or not even wrong. If the other guy does his job, you can have serious. You know, it's the only only sport where you truly gamble with your health and uh it needs to be respected and treated like that you know it's not all it's not all sunshine and rainbows you know what i mean oh, 100%. It's, it's, since, it's since you mentioned it have you ever seen somebody's lip get ripped open like that in the, in the ovary fight i've never seen that in most <laughs> much less with four seconds left in a fight that he was on his way to winning comfortably on the scorecards man i like that that dude is a bad dude biggie oh, boy that. dude yeah, no, over him, but then uh, 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 Big Boy, oh, yeah, yeah. he was Rosenstein. hanging out with us. Uh, <laughs> hey. He was on the same tour, hey. our schedule. And that dude, that dude's cool, man. He's out of Aruba. They got a camp out there. I was talking to uh, his coach, and uh, uh, I guess his the, the where he's fighting out of in Aruba is the, most, is the best Caribbean island because all the hurricanes miss it. And uh, uh, I don't know. I want to visit him and, and uh, see what's going on out there. But the, it looks like they're putting together a good program out there. I, I, and, and Aruba also is, is uh, under the jurisdiction of the Netherlands. So it's kind of a Netherlands versus Netherlands fight because Overeem's out of the Netherlands and Europe. And then uh, Aruba is uh, under the same the same flag, you know. So it's, it's pretty interesting. Hmm, I didn't know that. That's cool. I'd like, like to see him fight Derek Lewis. That would be an ultimate right there. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah, I heard – I saw – and Ganu already responded and said you could have a have a fight or something. So that, that's, uh, that, that would be the fight right there. That's – that might be the two baddest men, you know. Yeah, I'm down for any fight. Where the heavyweight be BMF. Big dudes. <laughs> two big dudes. Just the heavyweight BMF. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what, what was your take on the whole BMF business? Man, I like the BMF. I think uh, I think Masvidal should put that belt up for grabs against Canelo, and they should they should get it on in a boxing match. <laughs> you know? I was thinking this about Masvidal. Look, 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 look. I, I know what you're going to say. Canelo's going to school him. It's a different sport, all that. But I'd like to see it because people said the same thing about Floyd. And the first punch McGregor threw would have knocked out any man in MMA, you know, with that uppercut. Remember that when when Floyd kind of threw the threw the right hand and McGregor slipped it through that uppercut and hit him in the neck. But man, that. That was unreal. Like I thought, McGregor did surprise so many people. Did a hell of a job, and I'd like to see ATT and uh, uh, Mike Brown and all the all the uh, you know the mad scientists they have over there, all the experience they have over there. Did Thomas could tell all these guys over there uh, put their mind into how do we get Masvidal to have a good performance against Canelo? I'd like to see what they come up with it. And I love the spectacle. I love the boxing versus versus MMA. You know, one of these days there's going to be an MMA fighter who comes out and can you know, jab and move and win some rounds or just come crazy. And how come we haven't seen an MMA fighter throw a Superman punch? That's legal in boxing. You know what I mean? That's legal. <laughs> you can throw a Superman punch. You can leave the ground, throw a Superman punch. So I, th- I think I think Superman punch to clinch, Superman punch to clinch. Canelo's going to be like, what the hell is going on? Wrestle him, tire his arms out. Let's do some 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 creative creative stuff here and a real, have a real – I mean, this is old school martial arts. You got karate versus taekwondo. You got jujitsu versus wrestling. You know what I mean? Let's go boxing versus MMA at the highest level and put the BMF belt up for grabs, Masvidal versus Canelo, ATT versus the uh, Reynoso brothers. Oh. And let, let's see what, let's see what <laughs> <laughs> do you think do you think uh, from a business perspective that the that mma aka the ufc would get from the model where these guys have to do that for money because canelo's like i like you jorge but i got clout you ain't gonna give me for some money you, do you think you think that 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 the sport will ever advance enough so a guy won't have to do that like if a guy's doing that he's really about that fight life he ain't about that check like like you said y'all prize fighters <laughs> yeah yeah, but I mean, even both of them are going to clean up on that. Canelo and Masvidal would clean up on that. I got the, the answer I got for that is when the BMF belt was up for grabs, who sat on the couch and watched it in the middle of his show? Canelo did. You know what I mean? <laughs> he sat on the couch and watched Nate and Masvidal, and the whole arena did. They stopped it. What I mean, what does that say? I, I love boxing. No one loves boxing more than me. But when the marquee of boxing sits and watches a UFC fight, you know things are changing. You know what I mean? Things are changing. Now, the money isn't there because Canelo's getting $35 million or whatever, and Masvidal's getting probably 500000 on the check and pay-per-view or something. But it's going to catch back up because the viewership is there. I mean, if I'm at MGM and I'm there to watch Canelo fight and I got to watch the BMF belt, I don't know what I'm doing with boxing. I don't, I don't even know if I'm 
going to participate as a fan anymore because it's just like, what do you think you're doing? This is a marquee guy. You don't you don't stop and watch someone else's fight. But it's it's shifting. It's shifting. UFC's getting popular. I mean, it was crazy. The Rock and Donald Trump was at the BMF uh, title fight. You know, and that, that ain't even a real title. So it, it's just promotion. But the thing is, you know, boxing's been doing that the whole time. They made the money belt for when Mayweather fight. It's a million dollar belt. <laughs> yeah. It's nothing except for Mayweather's fight. And you know, they, they just do things like that. It, it's just promotion. And uh, I, I love I love the the, uh, uh, the, the WBC do that. Yeah. The, WB, the WBC does that. That's how they stay relevant. Like, my mom doesn't know anything about nothing. She's like, how come he got more than that green belt that everybody got? She thinks the green belt's like the main belt because of the marketing of the WBC. She yeah. knows nothing about the sport. Because she saw the fight of the belts with Joshua and Louise. She's like, why does he have the green belt? And I have to explain to her, like, Deontay has the green belt. Those are the other ones. How come nobody ever talk about that one? Like, she's so used to, to see the green belt. She thought that was, like, the main belt. <laughs> yeah, no, that is a WBC. I mean, if you're talking about the titles... It's it's WBC. If you're saying IBO and all this other stuff, I'm going to be like, all right, WBA, okay. <laughs> WBC, like, all right, that's the title. That's the, or the ring championship. You know, if you got the ring championship, uh, the the ring belt. But you know that that's a, that's a little tricky one too. You know, so yeah. I think the WBC is the belt, the equivalent of the UFC belt for boxing. Listen, I I, don't, I want nothing to do with a, a Masvidal versus a Canelo fight. But <laughs> but but you did come up. You came up with a great point. Like if if that were to happen, like that's the selling point. Like that's the promo. Like Masvidal has to get on a press conference and be like, "Hey, your ass was sitting on the couch waiting for me to fight." <laughs> that's the angle that they would use to sell it right there. Yeah, that's the angle. But competitive wise, I want nothing to do with it. I mean, if it if it made Masvidal a whole boatload of money, yes, I'd be for it for that reason for him. But. Competitive wise, like I'm done with the boxing versus MMA guys. I'm done. With yeah, that. I the one thing I never seen uh, Conor McGregor more happy than after Floyd whooped his butt. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I seen him at the press conference, conference, the post fight press conference with his whiskey dancing. I was there. Smiling. I was there and, with the Papa Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. He was a happy man, so it's like he got paid, and I feel Masvidal would get paid. And uh, I think Masvidal would would surprise some people. Like, you know, give give him give him the correct amount of time. And and I mean, they got they got literal martial arts geniuses over at ATT to put their minds on this. And they have a willing athlete like Masvidal, who's as strong and as tough as anybody. And you can put Roberto Duran in camp as well. You know what I mean? And and, and I, I think I think it'd be a spectacle. But uh, I hear what you're saying. I mean, a lot of people are just sick of that boxing. <laughs> No, I mean, there's, there's a lot of angles that you can use to sell it and get people interested. Yeah, it, it would it would be some it would be another spectacle for sure. But again, the, the actual results, we know we know what's going to happen. We know. Yeah, we know. So now, if you so get Marco, a kid, go ahead. Uh, two part question: Who's your fight of the year? Is it who we just got done talking about? And what's your take on this week coming up with these hot fights, man? We got three title fights. I I, I still say and and still in all three. Yeah, I would say, man, I don't know. I think Colby's got a chance against Usman. Oh, he got a chance. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna, dis- chance, I'm not gonna yeah. discredit him. But to take but, the but, belt, no, I think you're right. I think I think the the smart money would be with U- Usman retaining that for sure. I think him fighting Tyron got his confidence up because it's one thing to be a good fighter and fight on big stages, but to be in there, the fact that he did what he did to Tyron, and he wasn't even 100 percent. He yeah. knows that there's nothing that they can that Kobe can throw different to him. And in fact, that they know each other, and I just can tell, like you said, there's no way cuts in the street. I've seen them walk up on each other before. This guy, this whole Trump and all this stuff, as my man Matt yeah. say, this gimmick stuff got out of control. I saw them twice at MGM, and one time it got kind of heated. And just see, you can tell when somebody don't want none. Kobe didn't want none. I know he's getting paid to want it on uh on Saturday, but yeah. that right there told me something. That's yeah. like, I saw my information I see behind the scenes. To, if I'm an MGM, why well, I would put my money on Usman? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so it's definitely. Be a good fight. And yeah. who's your fight of the year for 2020? Who, who you got the three fights and who's your fight of the year for twenty uh, for 2019? Man, I'd have to probably say Masvidal, you know? He went he went from uh you know being a hard you know a darling of the hardcore fan base. He I mean he was knocking guys out and 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 beating tough guys on the undercard, and then 
the big fight, he, he would end up slipping or something. He, he wouldn't get at the win. But, you know, just what he did with Askren, and then he's the BMF, BMF champ. And, uh, and then Till, too. You know, I, that kind of that run is, is pretty incredible, you know. And he's got a belt out of it, too. You know, and that, that might be the most valuable in, in the sport. We'll see. I don't know what the Usman and uh, uh, Covington numbers are doing specifically for their fight, but I, I would like to see that compared to what Nate and Masvidal did. Uh, yeah, I wish we had access to those numbers, man. They can't. They keep it sealed away these days. I'm you know, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, you can kind of tell when Dana gets on social media or in the post-fight press conference, and he's got smile from ear to ear. That means the numbers are great. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, and nobody's talking about bad business. Counting money and and swimming, doing a backstroke in gold coins like Scrooge McDuck. Exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, like, it's like Joshua made eighty-five million. You know what I mean? Eighty-five million for Ruiz. That is just mind-boggling. And, 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 UFC, the, the marquee of UFC is still on, making, you know, a good contracts, half a million dollars to show up and then pay-per-view points, you know, and you'll leave with a couple million. Uh, but that, that's a great contract. And, and guys, now some of the champs, some of the bigger stars have bigger contracts than that, but not by much, you know, not by much, 85 yeah. million. And the dude lost. That's what he He made more money in the rematch than he did when he was a champion. Yeah, man. I, all I know is, man, Wilder's knocking them all out, dude, you know. Wow, Wilder's knocking him out. I love Wilder. He's he's the only. My favorite quote from him is he said he, he goes. I think I'm the only fighter to send all my trainers to the hospital. I don't think no other fighter <laughs> sent all their trainers to the hospital. And I was just thinking because I'm trying, like, yeah, that's messed up. You know, like you broke their ribs, mess up their shoulders. Like I don't know. That guy's just got you know. They, so they say you're born with that punch, and he really was. He he really is an example of that being born with that kind of power. That that power is insane. But I want to see him versus, you know, and I was I was rooting for Ruiz, you know, because USA all the way. Uh, but I, I I didn't think he was gonna gonna win the rematch. I thought there was too many smart, dedicated people around Joshua, and Joshua was enough of an athlete to do what he needed to do. And I feel Ruiz not having uh, a full camp and all that going into the fight was an advantage for him, you know. And I remember Joshua put him down earlier, and Joshua was was, was doing great in that fight until he got stopped. So. I thought over, you know, a long camp and everything else, uh, Joshua would come out the winner, even though I was rooting for Ruiz, but I still want to see Joshua get the win so he'd have to fight Wilder, you know what I mean? And forget about Tyson Fury, man. That guy, the Gypsy King, he's been hustling everybody. I don't think, I don't, everyone, everyone gave him so much credit. For he said, I'm going to beat you up again to Wilder. It's like, dude, Wilder knocked your head off. This guy's getting more credit from getting up when Wilder about decapitated you, put you down twice. You backed up the whole time, did this silly, like, duck and move and showboat thing. Wilder walked him down, barely took a step back in the fight, and people scored it for Fury. I'm like, and then Fury, dude, remember, after that fight, Fury told everybody he was going to give his entire purse to charity. That never happened, and no one followed up on it. <laughs> he spent all the money. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't give the guy – I'm not giving this guy some sob story, some great story, because – he beat Klitschko and partied for three years like a lunatic and then decided to come back because he was broke and says, oh, I overcame partying and alcoholism and drug abuse. <laughs> you did. You partied and you was broke. That's why you came back. You know what I mean? Then you fought a bunch of cans. Wilder beat your, you know, beat you up for how long? And then you're saying you won the fight. I don't I don't even get it. Man. I don't get it. I can't stand that what that Wilder don't get the credit he deserves. That, that, the knockout. And he's, you know. He's from Alabama. He's he's USA all the way, and and I'd like to see him take out the Brit Joshua. I think that's the fight in boxing right now. I think that's the biggest fight in uh, in you know combat sports right now. Joshua Wilder. If we could get that going, that would be that put boxing right back up in the in the number one slot on the pay per view. In my yes. man, man, man. You, you you hit up a lot of stuff. I, I guess I I start with Deontay. De- Deontay's my, my favorite De- Deontay quote. He said it over and over because I was at his last fight week when he knocked out Ortiz. He goes. Well, he got to be perfect for 36 minutes. I got to be perfect for two seconds. Ah, I like that. And then the other... Back. Oh, then with the other fighters, like, he definitely got to... I, I agree with you 100% on Tyson Ferry. I'll be there February 22nd. 
for, I've been to Vegas every month of the calendar year except for February because that's my birthday month and it's Emmy All Star weekend. I'm gonna check that out, boy. It's gonna be the day after my, birth, my birthday, so I'm pumped up to watch that ass whooping in person because he ain't getting up this time. That was the twelfth round, bro. He got yeah. up. And and t- tell me this: What's your take on on Ruiz coming in heavier and like basically doing like Tyson Fury? How do you keep somebody like a ch- a person? Who was a nobody that comes over with nice success? How do you control that? Because people were like, yeah, it felt bad because his trainer is named Manny Robles. He was have to apologize for him when he told him, bro, you got to get back in this gym in June or we're going to lose his belts in December. And he saw what happened yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I 15 mean, pounds bigger, bro. He's 15 yeah. pounds bigger from the upset. That's, that's unheard of in any combat sport. Yeah, it's Buster Douglas, you know? It's like, like, I, I don't know. It blows my mind. It's like when you get your hands on that belt, you got to do everything to keep that. That's your legacy. That's what's going to define your career. You know, just winning it one time isn't going to define your career. Like it, it goes back to what Matt Hughes always said. And I'm not <laughs> want to quote, quote Matt Hughes. Like it's some kind of <laughs> game, man. But, <laughs> hey, you hate the champ until you defend it, you know? And he was right about that. I, I, I agree with that. I, I think, I think Ruiz had, the world was his oyster right there when he when he beat Joshua. And if he would have just continued that dis, I mean, if he would have disciplined himself and hardened himself and and made the decision there that he is going to keep this belt and beat him in the rematch, because as soon as he beat him, the whole world, all the money, all the money from uh, Eddie Hearn, every, all the money in the sport at the time, the biggest promotion, did everything they could to 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 make Joshua win again. You know what I mean? And 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 they they were successful and and. Half of that was Ruiz. He didn't take it serious. And then, I don't know, maybe, maybe he thinks he's going to get a rematch. But the thing is this, and it's one, one uh, you know, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu coach told me this. He said, people from the ghetto who get money, they can never hold on to it because they're not, they just, they don't know about it. And it, it's kind of true, you know, people who, who come from poor, a poor uh, or, you know, not, kind of high means or anything like that and they got to work their way up they get this money and then they just lose sight of everything they think they've made it and they've done it when when that should have been the tip of the iceberg for Ruiz Ruiz should have just like steeled down on this and 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 disciplined himself and and came after Joshua you know light and in shape but it was opposite Joshua did that and and Ruiz went the opposite way so he was you know I think Teddy has just been roasting him nonstop on Twitter calling him a punching bag and all this other stuff, but you know, <laughs> it's it, it is what it is. But I, I'm excited for the uh, uh, Wilder and Joshua fight after he he takes out that garbage Tyson Fury. You know what I mean? Here's the thing: <laughs> watching Tyson Fury coming up, all the boxing world was like almost embarrassed by him. Like if you remember before he tried to uppercut that dude and he missed and punched himself in the face. You guys remember that? It's a clip. Yes, yes, I remember that. And he's, in the face and that was, it was just it was, it was hilarious but his style was he's not knocking anyone out Tyson Fury he's got like no knockout power you know yeah and he's moving oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> right and then then all of a sudden he just comes out with the he throws in he used the mental health thing I mean people it, it's mental, <laughs> he, he uses the mental health thing and and and, and Mental health is important. All that stuff is important, but I know exactly his angle. He's a gypsy. You know what I mean? I posted this stuff on Instagram. I said, look, the gypsy king got you all fooled. And these people posted back. They said, hey, don't call him a gypsy. He's called a traveler. And I went, his nickname is the gypsy king. Like, what do you mean I can't call him a gypsy? That's his nickname. Like, uh, you know, you don't want to buy a pair of gypsy. You guys seen Snatch? Like, those guys are hustlers. They're going to trick you. And he tricked everybody. And I feel like he's still <laughs> tricking everybody, you know? But hopefully <laughs> my boy Wilder could just get rid of that trash and send him back to England or wherever the heck he's from. <laughs> oh, yeah, at home. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Do, do, you, do you watch other fights? When, are you? I know Cynthia is your girl. You focus. Do you watch any fights before or after? Or do you, or, or do you like do you you have your own coaches preparation or it's it's different being a coach versus when your athlete your athlete's gotta get in that mode like do you watch any other fights? Uh, the the fight night, uh, the UFC yeah. night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we no, watch. I'm talking, about the, I'm talking about the fights that the in the arena, not like boxing and like that. I'm talking about the ones in the arena. Oh, yeah, yeah. We watch we watch most of those fights. They got they the UFC usually does a really good job putting a, a monitor in the room and uh, you know we watch those fights while we pass the time waiting waiting for us to go because they're usually. 
the four hours before or, or whatever, you know. So we watched most of the fights. They, they were there were some good fights. I, I I guess the main card wasn't that good, but the prelims they were all finishes, submissions after submissions. It was a it was a pretty good night. I felt I felt for the fights. There was some crazy stuff going on. There's a I think the first fight was a vicious knockout was uh uh and then uh then there was that a, man moved, dude. That man moved, dude. I saw the highlight. Yeah, I he got a bonus for that. You got a bonus for that, right? What, what what you think about that 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 that, that Cody Stamen and that Song Yong Dong? That was crazy fight too. It got you rule to draw. That that was crazy. I mean, I looked at the punch stats on that. And I don't I don't know what what was going on with there. I didn't get to see like really study the fight, but as the fight was getting over, I saw Stamen was mounted position, ground and pounding, and, and then I know in the first round he had a point. Uh, deducted as well, so I I, fe- I felt like he was gonna gonna take that fight, yeah. uh, and then it ended up in a draw. But you know how the UFC is pushing that UFC PI out in China and trying to get. Not that it has anything to do with it because the judges are commission based, but uh, I don't know. I I'd like to see that fight run that fight back. You know, oh, for I, sure. I don't. I, I know Stamen. Stamen has been been my buddy for a long time. I used to train Song Yudong for a little bit back when he was coming up, and he's a He's a he's a hell of a fighter, man, and he's got so much potential. Uh, but in the ground game, though, he said he all hands. He got some hands, <laughs> man. He does he does got some hands, yeah. but he he's so athletic. Uh, he he usually can scramble up and but St- you know Stamen's a good wrestler and and uh, it maybe maybe kind of expose some 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 things to do to uh, to uh, Yudong, but uh, I feel like Yudong is gonna come back and uh, really prepare himself on the ground where he, where he kind of got exploited in that fight and uh uh yeah that's an interesting one but I was, I was pretty surprised by the draw i think there's been three ufc cards i saw a stat someone posted i think it was mike bond or something posted a stat that said uh there's only three ufc cards that had uh two draws on it this this is the third one now so that, it was pretty rare you know but i honestly i feel the cynthia and uh, uh marina fight that, that was a, a pretty good call on the draw yeah, no, like it's very rare that I agree with draws in MMA, and I was like, oh no, th- this, this is right, this is right. Nobody wins. Let's, let's do it again. <laughs> Nobody wins. You know, yeah. that's, that's. I was like, I thought a draw. I thought they got show and win money. I'm like, for a, like, I, I I don't know, but that's got to. We got to negotiate in Cynthia's next contract. That if it's a draw, you get show and win money because well, what the hell is it? Win money or something, right? Something. Yeah good too that'd be good too but man you 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 fight the over the distance you come this close to winning you know what i mean judges score they couldn't decide who won it was that close and you get your show money you know what i mean like i feel like you should get your show and win money for a draw i don't know if we you know I, it's just news to me i, I gotta we gotta make sure that's negotiated into, into her next contract or, or whatever but and all the other fighters out there need to need to take note of that too if you get a draw you're not getting your win money Unless you negotiated that in there, so what, do you, you what if you think they got? What if what if you think they got real funky with it? When it's like a draw, be like, all right, we're going to Twitter. <laughs> Throw up a Twitter poll. Who won? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking. At, I'm looking at. Uh, do you look at MA decisions, Buckholtz? They got three people scored it for Marina. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people, include my nine people, include myself. Had a draw, and some guy named uh, Tyler Trees from Sherdog sure had it. 2928 Cynthia. Huh. I mean I mean yeah, it's kind of over the board uh, uh, all over the board on that, you know what I mean? Like you can you can kind of interpret that that the way it is, but I think the draw draw was was a, was a pretty decent call, you know. I just I watched it I think the same the same night got back to the hotel room and checked it out and uh yeah, I, man, I just look, Marina she was never in a position to really finish Cynthia. And Cynthia was in a position in the entire third round to finish her, where the referee for, I mean, damn near 30 seconds was flinching, about to jump in. I saw it twice. Yeah. I saw it twice. I think, I think when she wrote, when she, when she flatlined her, but she was facing the cage, and she's yeah. facing the other way, I think it stopped. And then Cynthia cracked it with the two elbows. I thought it was going to get stopped then. And then I think because she was facing the cage. you Maybe because you had a better angle. Is that, do you think that played a role? Because she wasn't yeah. facing her. I mean, he was, he really had to keep himself in check, Yamasaki, to, to, to stop that fight. He wanted to stop that fight, you know what I mean? And, and I wish he would have stopped that fight because that was a, you know, you're, you're one split second away from being a hero, you know, coming down from two rounds and then getting that finish. And she was just right there. So a couple minor adjustments 
uh, and she does get that finish, you know what I mean? And a couple minor adjustments with, with the preparation in camp. I mean, there was, there was a lot of things that, uh, we, we didn't, we couldn't do that. We normally do, you know what I mean? Because she would she like I said, she, she w- was, you know, in and out of the country and, uh, de- dealing with, dealing with all kinds of things like that. But, you know, super proud of her for, for, you know, she bit down on that mouthpiece and she's like, I got this and went out there and blast doubled her exactly like we told her got on top and went for broke and almost got her out of there and you can't ask any more from your athlete you know than that so uh we need what's some what's mindset today? what was what's that what's mindset today what was cynthia's mindset today like how's she feeling and what's her what's her mindset after being in that crazy war and being like lily like you teeter don't lose it also you teeter don't win it and then you just go home just like home home yeah, that's just like uh, every every now and then we, we would be like checking out the Washington Monument. And I just hear a, you know, a, eh, you know, like this. And I look over and it's just she's just thinking about oh this close. You know what I mean? This close. I could have could have had it, you know, but just just because she's so competitive. But she's in with it well. And I told her, you know, the main thing I was telling her was like, you got to think, you know, if you're going to if you're going to think about all the, the hardships of the camp and all the stuff that did go your way, you got to think about the stuff that you did accomplish and give yourself credit for all that. Like. You know, basically, she put together a world-class camp and a co-main event slot all on her own for this camp. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't there there with her, helping her. She didn't have have a team around her, you know, and uh, uh, she she had to, had to take on all the responsibilities of, of a head coach, of a conditioning coach, of scheduling all this stuff, of international travel, you know what I mean, and, 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 and everything else, game planning, mainly on, on, on her own and, and be the one to, to – uh, uh, police it and stay disciplined with it and she did a hell of a job you know what i mean so i, I mean my gym's not prepared but when i get some mats down you know then then we, we can start doing some real work i could i could be much more effective you know what i mean i could get and uh um i think she's going to benefit tremendously from it from the from the coaches and the training that i'll have in the gym and then also being right here in west sacramento she don't got to go to the other side of the world and uh, I think the results are going to speak for themselves. I think I think it's going to show her so sh- show in her next fight and her next performances, whether that be Marina again or that be at 125. She's already beaten half the girls at 125. You know what I mean? She, she's got wins over a lot of those girls. I mean, I think Calder was ranked number three or something. Cynthia got a win over her at 115. And then you got uh, Jillian Robertson, Montana Stewart. I mean, and we saw how tough Aspen Ladd is. Cynthia got a win at, uh, over Aspen Ladd at 125 as well. So. You know, she, she's got some experience at 125, and she went to uh, the UFC at 115 because 125 didn't exist. There were no flyweights at that time, you know what I mean? She's a veteran now. She's smart, and uh, uh, so so whether it be at 125 or at 115, uh, I'm just excited for to, to see to see her next fight, you know? I think this is – this is she got the draw, and, and she really realizes how close she was to finishing her. And uh, I think that'll show on her next opponent. I think she gets a finish on her next opponent. She's got. I think she's got. She's tied for the most finishes, or five or something, as the most finishes in the division, or, or two or something like that. I saw the stat, but you know she's a finisher, and uh, she almost finished this girl, and the, the next girl's gonna get it. And I, I'm hoping it's Marina. I'm hoping. It's Marina. <laughs> yeah, man. I hope so too. Uh, I want to see him running back. Let's just make it right. Let's let's get a winner. Let's let's not you know. Leave it at a draw, and then, and then that be it. Let's, yeah, let's, let's it's run like it you let's said, the, the sake of the division. They're both top ten. What do we do now? They just kind of go their separate ways, and and then you know, Marina come by with all stuck up, giving us stinky looks all the time. She needs to. She needs to get it. You know, right. <laughs> her and her can. Right. Okay. <laughs> so so so, how close is your gym close to being done? And uh, what do you think? She stacks up, Cynthia stacks up with the champions in those divisions. Cause like at 125, it seems like it's Valentina and everybody else. Yeah, no, I agree. Valentina is tough, you know, but uh, I don't, you know, Cynthia, you know, likes nothing more than a challenge. And uh, I think at 125, you, you see this a lot as as, as fighters, uh, you know, become older in their careers and, and they move up and wait and they get, re, you know, have a, have a rebirth. I mean, look at Kevin Gassum, uh, even, uh, Darren Till recently, uh, a lot of these guys move up and, and they, they find success there. I mean, even, even, uh, uh, Whitt- Whitaker, you know, Whitaker was, was, he got, was getting knocked out at 170. You know, he went up to 185, became the champion. And, uh, you know, uh, 
I think I think that'd be a, a, a great challenge and 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 Cynthia on the ground is is world class. I don't think there's very many girls that can compete with her uh, on the mat, you know. So it's just putting everything else together in order to to get the fight there, and then also to score because you you can't you can't just not have uh, effective stand up. And Cynthia has very effective stand up, but Marina has a very brutal style and an aggressive style and. Uh, you know, she it took her time uh, time to adjust that. The thing is, is is you have a fighter like Marina who comes forward so hard, she comes forward into takedowns, into grappling exchanges, and that's Cynthia's world. And I think she can take much better advantage of that if they if they fought again. But but back to your point on the champions, I think uh, I think Cynthia's right right up in the top with any of them. I mean, uh, who do we got for it's uh, Wele and uh, Joanna fighting. So we'll see, we'll see what, where that where that goes and and you know Cynthia on top of any of those girls are in trouble so uh, you know yeah, I agree with uh, that. get up there. No, I agree with that. What about what about the gym? How, how's it, how's the gym for progressing and when do you expect a completion? Man, so I just got uh, the permits. The permits are all in. It's getting uh, built out. It's thirteen thousand square feet in West Sacramento. Uh, I got a hundred thousand dollars worth of zebra equipment there. I gotta have a 2,500 square foot mat. You know what I mean? You can play an arena league football game on that mat. It's so big. Uh, I got uh, 50 bags, custom bags in there. Uh, 40 100 pound bags, uh, 10 uh, 130 pound bags, and more more stuff to come. So uh, it's gonna be uh, one of the premier training places in the world. It's two miles from the California State Capitol. It's actually in West Sacramento, the best sac. I'm in Yolo County. Sac County is where Sacramento is at on the other side of the river. I'm in Yolo County, and uh, it's a little more country out there. Yeah, Yolo County, that's really the name. I was like, oh, okay. people are out that's the name. It's like, yeah, Yolo. So uh, I'm in the coolest county in the United States. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, it, like I said, it's two miles from the capital. It's right down from uh, Rayleigh's Field. It's in, a, it's in an area called the Bridges District, which West Sacramento is just developing like crazy. There's new hotels coming in, and. And uh, pretty excited about it, but I just got the permit, so the build out has started right now. And you know, they're telling me that it should be done January 26th. So I'm thinking February. I'm, I, I should have an opening day here. So we got to take the show. Note. We, oh, yeah, we got, to, we, got, to, got, to, got to. The two questions: Can, can a slip of them get some exclusive stuff? And then number two: You didn't let that do that. That 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 was the the financial advisor for the Kings. Financial jail. <laughs> you know what I'm talking yeah. about, right? Hey, who, that was yeah. crazy, wasn't it? That is crazy stuff. That dude I, stole 13 mil and nobody checked him. Gee. Until that white lady did. Well, I think that white that white lady did. That was the HR lady and then that's all she wrote. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you don't know the story? That's I, that, that's I, looking I, crazy. I, I, no, I'm looking at you crazy because nobody knows what you're talking about, Kendrick. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I know what you're saying. That embezzlement with the yeah. No, no. I, it's, I big, it's, it's, it's a Sacramento thing. It's it, it's a it's a big NBA thing, but he lives in Sacramento. I'm pretty sure it's big in Sacramento because it happened in Sacramento. Yeah, yeah. there's 13 million for the Kings. I gotta get that guy to come work for me. That's crazy. <laughs> 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 no, but yeah, slipping dip. No, I roll the red carpet out. You guys, man, you guys are always welcome. I'd be love to have you guys come up anytime. For you sure, know, man. I mean, I'm getting in my videographer bag, man. Go check out that video I did on Jeff Neal. Okay. Out. So I want to come out, come out there at some point and get something like that over at the new spot, the new Buckholz Palace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. It's gonna be sick. I got, I got, I got, I got a, a, a fifteen hundred square foot kickboxing uh, room that is heated kickboxing. It's called Burn Box. So you can go in there wow. and uh, it's like hot yoga, you know. But kickboxing is way better. It's the first, first one on the West Coast. Nobody's doing it. I'm starting the trend right now at my gym. I'm combining like boutique fitness with martial arts and then also a professional fight team. But the professional fight team is going to happen. I got, I've already, uh, the only coach, I've signed one coach to the staff, the coaching staff permanently, and that's Joe Soto, Bellator champion, uh, first, first Bellator featherweight champ, EBI finalist, two time California state champion, and roommate uh, in, in, uh, in college. He was roommates with John Jones and Colby Covington. and he was the third guy. And he told me after the first semester, he had to get the hell out of there because they're too crazy. <laughs> he's a he's an amazing grappler, amazing fighter, world champion, two-time world champion, and he'll be great to get. 
I can't wait to do some work with him. You know what I mean? Train some of these fighters and, and, uh, you know, come after some of these championships, get some guys in the UFC and, and California is a wrestling hotbed. So I have tons of wrestlers, tons of talent and, uh, yeah, and MMA hotbed, hotbed for everything, you know? Uh, so I, I can't wait. That's dope, man. Well, we, we're excited about that success for you as well, man. And, uh, best of luck with all of that, getting all, all up to tip top shape, man. Thank you. And thanks for the time been- as always, man, coming on the show. We appreciate you. Of course. <laughs> uh, I first tried coastal. Yeah. <laughs> so coastal stuff. We, we literally coast to coast. <laughs> East Coast, Central, West Coast, holding it down, man. <laughs> Slipping down yeah, worldwide. A <laughs> whole country, yeah, yeah. Soon worldwide, yeah. But hey, you get America, America number one. So you know what I mean. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Well, we'll let you go, Justin. Man, we appreciate the time, as always, and uh, we'll be in touch, man. We got, we definitely got to set up a date once this is all done. We got to make it out. Yeah, man. for sure. <laughs> I, and I'll take you guys to Tahoe. We'll put Kendrick on a snowboard, push oh, him off the hill. Yes, Lord, please. I, I, know, I, I, know, yes, I never, Lord. I never, I never no ACL. I'm not trying to start now. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right, man. We'll let you go, brother. Appreciate the time. All right, All right man. Yeah. Thank you, Kendrick. Thank you. Please welcome to the Slip and Dip Podcast. Making his slip and dip debut, one of the best boxing writers in the world today. He's a senior writer at BoxingScene.com, Mr. Jake Donovan, all things boxing. And we're going to hit him right after the jump with right. some Joshua Ruiz, too. Are you surprised what happened in Saudi Arabia? I, 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 my whole thing is, why are people tripping that Andrew Ruiz was out of shame and he didn't put on the same performance he put on June when we've been seeing him for the last three months. It was like, it's like he's Earl Spence and just showed up and we don't know what's going on. Right. It's like, Charles, what, what y'all been thinking? <laughs> he tried to tell you he was not that guy. And it's like he had to show you he was not that guy for people to believe he's not that guy. Yeah, it, it, it was bizarre, man. It was, um, you know, a lot of people, I think they were just in denial. I'm going to admit, I was, you know, one of them. I was until the very end, I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. I, I think it's just he, sh- he surprised so many of us in June, you know, so maybe we just wanted to believe that same guy was going to show up again. You know, he, was, he wasn't he was in the greatest shape when he fought Anthony Joshua the first time, and he still did what he did. So thought maybe with 15 extra pounds, he had a little more base in his step, you know, who knows. But it just, you know, like you said, it was we got what we saw all along. We just didn't want to believe it. And then, you know, Anthony Joshua was the one that had to make us believe us because, you know, Andy was just so out of shape. He couldn't, you know, cut off the ring. He couldn't slow down, uh, you know, uh, the very mobile, the very smart Anthony Joshua. You know, he's, you know, all, all credit to AJ for what he was able to do. And, you know, shame on Andy just for, for letting a lot of people down. I mean, from Manny Robles, Al Heyman, the whole PBC movement, you know, everyone that got behind him when he was stuck in, the, you know, what he felt was a bad contract. He, he just let, you know, all of Mexico, you know, he had that huge fight party at his house. You know, all those people supporting him. It's just, you know, he, he's got a lot to live with for the next few months. So, I mean, you know, it doesn't matter what boxing fans think of him or writers, you know, all the people that were closest to him, all the people that stood tall with him, that those are the ones he's got to look in the eye for the more, you know, months moving ahead. Yeah, it, it's real unfortunate, man, because he was trying to give off the vibe where, he, you know, he, I'm playing mind games with, with Anthony Joshua coming down on the scale a little bit heavier and all this stuff, try to get in their head. Like, you're not a cer- cerebral assassin. We didn't, we haven't seen that from you ever in your career before. And right. I know, I know some people around him had to be telling him, look, you're doing too much. Somebody had yeah. to be in the camp saying that. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, we even saw in the interviews, you know, his dad was worried about like all the money he was spending. He, you know, these parties where he's having like, you know, these naked sushi girls and, you know, eating sushi off them. <laughs> I, you saw, he was living the life. Everyone kept saying, man, don't go to bust the Douglas route. I'm sure his pops was saying that. I'm sure Manny Robles was saying that from July all the way to September, you know, Manny calling him, when are we going to start training? When are we going to start training? And, you know, and he's just going to do things his own way. I, even with top rank, he was kind of that way, too. He had the people, you know, told him you got to come in to fight at a certain weight. You know, he tried it. And then he's just going to do things his own way. And like I said, it, it worked in June. He thought he was going to, work, you know, work again. He thought he could just show up on fight night and make it all happen. And, you know, he learned it the hard way. He got paid a lot of money. But, you know, no one's going to give him that, that opportunity. You know, he's going to have to prove it again, you know, if, if he wants it again. So do you think he's a one hit wonder? No, I don't. I don't. I think um, I, I've always been a fan of Andy Ruiz. Even when he was just a prospect with top rank, I've always believed him when a lot of other people didn't. You know, very fast for a guy his size. Um, you know, you saw he gave Joseph Walker all sorts of fits. You know, when he going to, um, to New Zealand, you know, for their vacant title fight. So, the, you know, he just needed an opportunity like Anthony Joshua. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I predicted him to knock out Anthony Joshua when they fought. But I've always believed he was on the bubble of being a top 10 contender. That was the opportunity he needed. 
And he just needs to have that confidence moving forward. And he just needs to listen to the people around him. Manny Robles is the perfect guy to, to be in your ear. You know, Al Heyman, you know, the, the very small people are in his life right now. He just needs to listen to what they have to say and just heed that advice. But, you know, get your ass in the gym earlier. And, and I think everything will be fine. Serious, man. I mean, I, I, if they fought a third time, I wouldn't discount him beating Anthony Joshua again. What sets me out is that uh, if you want to look at it from a, from a literal sense, the fact that he was that out of shape and he went 12 rounds with, yeah. quote unquote, one of the baddest men on the planet. So it's kind of like, it's like if you got a little motivation in your life, yeah. what, can, what you can And we always saw a little bit of what you do. What can you really do if you really went and dropped up 30 pounds? Yeah, exactly. I, I agree 100%. And, you know, that's why I said, like, he, he was able to do it in June. And he's able to, you know, been able to hang in there with top heavyweights. Even his debut at PBC, it's like he came right out the gate. He smoked Alexander Dimitrenko. And then, you know, two days later, he was DMing Eddie saying, hey, man, Jarrell Miller can't fight. I'm available. I mean, that, that said a lot about him. He was willing to turn it around five weeks later. He just, he wasn't cashing himself out. He was a guy, I mean, Eddie even said going into the first fight, they didn't know how to read him because he just doesn't give a fuck. He just... He doesn't, you know, nothing faced him. And every report in Saudi Arabia when he was over there, it just, he, he couldn't care less about, you know, he wasn't caught up in the moment. You know, there, there was nothing that was going to intimidate him. It's just, it was weird. We were so worried about, you know, everything, in, you know, what was going on with Anthony Joshua, that you know, everything upstairs was going to be all right with him. It was Andy, though. He just didn't care enough, though. It was, you know, his head was the one who wasn't in the right place. So, I mean, you know, go figure that out. But as, as long as he gets his head on, like I said, he has the right people in his life that, you know, they can steer him in the right direction hopefully this was a learning lesson for him I, if it's not i mean then you absolutely have to give up. i mean if you can't learn from this i mean it's just you know take millions and go do something else in life but yeah I, I think in 2020 we will see something better out of andy ruiz i you know at least i certainly hope so yeah in, in the way that the fight played out because it was a perfect contrast because we saw the kind of the opposite of the andy ruiz but right. Andy joshua came in on just focus on 10. Like he yeah. was, he was extremely focused on that game plan. He wasn't going to deviate from it, no matter what happened. I yeah. mean, there were a couple of points in the fight where it looked like he kind of wanted to get away from it, but you can right. kind of hear the corner be like, "Nah, ah, 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 ah. Yeah. We, we know what we're doing here. <laughs> nah, bring it back." <laughs> yeah, I mean, back in back. Back. Well, Kaj, he's you know he's relatively young. I mean, he, he you know won his first title you know in the 16th pro fight. He's a, a multi millionaire, probably creeping up on billionaire status. I mean, for all the money he's raking in, it's. That's easy to get to your head. So, I mean, that speaks volumes of, you know, just how humbly he's always remained, even through his title reign. And the weird thing with AJ, it's like you always hear from Eddie Hearn. You never hear from, you know, Anthony Joshua's always in training. He really don't speak to the media up until, you know, maybe fight week. But he's a very powerful speaker, a lot, a lot like Deontay Wilder. It's like these are the two guys you want leading the sport. They, you know, when pe people say, you know, who do we need to follow in boxing? These are the guys, you know, that, that you know, you want someone big and bold, you know, representing the sport. And Anthony Joshua, he's just... I, I love hearing him speak. He's so motivating. And you saw it. He, he, he brought that into the ring. Um, I, 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 a lot of people were killing his performance. You know, they felt like I, I hate, you know, when they say, you know, they mistake lateral movement for running. He wasn't running. He fought smart. It wasn't his job to sit there and risk getting knocked out again. Why the hell would you want to do that for all the money he made? So I, you got to give him credit for that. I mean, yeah, you could say that, you know, once he saw Andy Ruiz wasn't up for the task, you know, maybe go in and try to knock him out and make a statement. But. You know, beyond that, it's hard to hate on him. So I, I, I thought he fought, you know, a terrific fight. See, Jake, you, you subscribe to our theory on the show. Getting yeah. hit is not cool. There's nothing cool about getting hit. No. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and number yeah. two, yeah. the way he fought that fight, though, there's no way he could beat Deontay Wilder because with that reach and the height, that mm -hmm. ain't going to happen. So I, we know he, we know he, he doesn't want to brawl. And he can't fight out technical. So how is he going to go, as Dante say, 36 minutes of being perfect? I don't see it happen. No, I, 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 I don't know it's going to happen. After watching yesterday, I know for a fact it yep. cannot happen. He's going to have to pull a fury and get up off that canvas at yeah, least I, once. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. And, you know, you mentioned Fury. I, I wouldn't even say that what we saw from Anthony Josh yesterday beats Tyson Fury. I mean, he was fortunate. Or Ortiz. Or Ortiz. I, that, that's very possible, too. I mean... You know, I mean, but even though, with, you know, Deontay, he's the one. He's speaking into existence. It's like, you know, you have to be perfect at 12 rounds. He only has to be perfect for one punch. I mean, I don't know we said two seconds, but as, as long as it takes him to throw that right hand, I mean, that's that, that you're in danger. So, yeah, a lot of that is the common uh, denominator coming out of yesterday. It's like, yeah, great performance from AJ. Congratulations on getting all your belts back. But, you know, right now, like I'm part of a, a ratings committee. We're trying to determine, you know, the, the heavyweight rankings and 
we have, you know, we're arguing whether Deontay or Tyson Fury is the best two heavyweights in the world. We're not arguing if Anthony Joshua is. He, he's lost that place. And that's something he has to get back in 2020. And with all the mandatories he's got coming up, I'm, he's not going to prove that unless he fights the winner of, of Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. But right now, like I said, from what we saw yesterday, I don't think he beats either one of them. I don't think he boxed well enough yesterday to, to outbox Tyson Fury. And like you said, he, he, he didn't, you know, that stuff is not going to work for Deontay Wilder for, I don't even know, for six or seven rounds, never mind 12. Yeah, I, I, I would say six and some high-ranking people in the boxing game. I'm going to throw their name out there where basically like you give him too much credit. <laughs> uh, no, not at all. I, he, he's proved it, you know, 40, was it uh, 41 out of 43 times. I mean, it's. <laughs> yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Like one of the other fights on the on the card that uh, I know we talked about for a little note for the people listening. Uh, this is our take two on this interview. So. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the Pavekin fight, which also took place in the same night, was was amazing because that lived up to the hype and the entrances were dope. Yep. <laughs> and we had the whole Predator vibe going on and everything like that. <laughs> and then, the, of course, the way the fight played out was pretty yeah. dope too. So, I mean, what did you what did you think about it, that one, Jake? I love that fight. I mean, that's a perfect example too. like, you know, for people who are clowning on, oh, you know, you know, you want to see just, you know, AJ, you know, go for the knockout or get knocked out. That fight was the perfect example. It wasn't an all out slugfest. It was a very smart fight by both of them. You know, Michael Hunter, he came out, he, he was convinced he was going to knock out, you know, 40 year old Pavekin. And he came out smoking in that first minute. He was he was convinced he was going to put him on his ass. And Pavekin, <laughs> yeah, Pavekin quickly made adjustments. And the two, it was just so much momentum flowing back and forth for 12 rounds. I, I absolutely love that fight. You know, everyone keeps saying, you know, a third fight between Josh and Ruiz. I know the sour on it. I absolutely want to see a second fight between Michael Hunter and Alexander Vivekin. I personally thought Hunter edged it. I was fine with the draw, though. It was um, – I, I, I can't say enough about that fight, man. They're just – you know, Hunter, he's a cruiserweight moving up, you know, playing heavyweight. And he's showing. He's, he's a legit top 10 heavyweight right now. He's, he's a threat for anyone out there. And that loss to uh, Alexander Usyk – that that's looking even better for us. You know, every time Michael Hunter fights, because he's doing a great job at the heavyweight division. Um, I, I, like I, I can't say enough about that. That fight was just so fantastic. That really saved the card for me, in my opinion. Since she brought his name up, I'm not gonna say what the big deal is about Usyk, but like to me, there's no way he can be. Uh, to me, not even an in shape. Uh, he probably could be an in shape with Weez, but he doesn't beat the big three. He's too little. Right. He's not. He's not. He's, he, he, that doesn't translate. Like his skill set, as good as it is, is not going to translate to beating a Fury or a Joshua or a Wilder. Yeah, I don't. See, I don't. I don't. He might get a belt. Like they say, if it's one of them, I give away a mandatory. He fights a Ruiz and beats him right. or something like that. But he didn't have problems with Ortiz. So why do people have so much hype around here when he's not in his weight class no more? Like he's moving to the big dogs. Like that stuff's not going to work. You could be winning, like, like John said, you could be winning for 10 minutes. I mean, 10 right. rounds, and you still take that L. Yeah, yeah that, I, I agree, man. Like I said, I, I love this cruiserweight for run. He, you know, he absolutely deserved the fighter of the year last year for everything he did at cruiserweight in the World Boxing Super Series. But, I, I, you know, the jersey. I'm sorry? That's, that's cruiserweight. That is. Well, oh, even going back to. This and that, I'm like, he should have kept his ass in his weight class. Exactly. No, even going back to when he fought Michael Hunter. I mean, Michael Hunter had a lot of success until, you know, Usyk was able to turn it on in the second half of that fight. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't mind seeing a rematch of anyway between them two. I'm not sure Usyk beats him this time around. But, you know, what's going to work to his advantage is, you know, that he is signed with co-promotional agreement with, um, with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Boxing. So, AJ has a decision to make, whether he needs to fight Kudak Kulev, which is his IBF mandatory, or Usyk, who's the WBO mandatory. Eddie, for a minute, was talking about Usyk fighting Derek Chisora. I don't know if that fight's still going to happen because it wouldn't be for the vacant title, but, you know, maybe... I, I don't know how Eddie convinces Anthony Joshua. He just won all the belts back. How do you convince him, okay, now you're going to give up one just so one of our guys can fight for the title? You know, unless there's that security that, you know, okay, you go fight Pulev. He probably beats Pulev. You know, Usyk wins a vacant title, and then maybe they fight later this year. But, you know, I, I agree with you. Know, right now, Usyk's best shot is getting a, a vacant title. But even at that... He still has to beat a Joseph Parker or even an Andy Ruiz because Andy could wind up the number two contender if Joshua does vacate that title. So, you know, that's going to be one of his two fights. And he, he's not a 100 percent guaranteed win against, like you said, really any top 10 contender at this point. I, I wouldn't even consider him a top 10 heavyweight. He's a top 10 pound for pound talent, but not a top 10 heavyweight at this moment. No. Jamal, tell that Jamal Charles' performance. I, I was there. 
he he said it, and I kind of think that people don't talk about this publicly. He's kind of a Terrence Crawford in his in his division yeah. for the simple fact, like he's a talented fighter. He does want to actually fight everybody, but the whole politics. He's a victim of the politics, and yeah. he's taking a lot of smoke when. And to his point, he he's doing the best he can do. He's just beating what they put in front of him and going to do what he got to do. But he legitimately wants the Canelos and the Triple Gs. Right. Like, yes. Yeah, no, I agree. That's a perfect analogy, too, with Terrence Crawford. He is the Terrence Crawford of the PBC right now because um, I, I, I make him competitive against any middleweight in the world right now. I mean, you're, same with Demetrius Andre, who actually is on, quote, unquote, the right side of the street, but he's not getting any of those fights. So everyone keeps saying that's the fight that needs to happen. They both kind of need each other. I would love for that fight to happen next. You know, um, actually, we just wrote a story. Uh, Keith Heidek just wrote a story about Charlo saying, you know, Andre's hiding behind his own contract. I got a story about Andre coming out, you know, in response to that. So hopefully we do see that fight. But the thing, going back to last night, what I do like about Charlo is that he just didn't take that fight for granted. It, you know, it wasn't the same performance he gave against Brandon Adams, which was very good, but it really didn't blow you away. He made a statement against Dennis Hogan. I mean, Dennis Hogan argue, arguably beat Jaime Munguia, you know, what, was it eight months ago? And Charlo just fall right through him. He, he made it seem like, you know, he had no business in the, in the ring with him. So he probably didn't. And Charlo let him know that. that I, you got to respect that performance. Yeah, he, he, he has some, there's a couple of things. I was at the Brandon Adams fight. Mm -hmm. Brandon Adams, he fought not to get knocked out. So yeah. he, Charlo yeah. took a, like the dude's like five eight. he's crouching. Hey, what yeah. you do? <laughs> he's like trying to hit his kneecap? Like that was yeah. the most <laughs> oddest thing I've seen. And then um, last night, the little Irish cat had too much false bravado. Yeah. And like, I never seen nobody, like, in a championship fight, like, that's some undercard shit that <laughs> fall the way he fell in the third round. And he rolled and almost rolled out. I've never seen that in, like, the main event, like, when the belt's on the line. You see something like that in, like, the opening, the curtain or something like that fight. Yeah. But at the main event, <laughs> but the stop, though, I was telling Matt, because Matt was watching UFC, the mm -hmm. stops and – the main and the co-main, because New Yorkers, they, they F up a lot of stuff on the MMA side. They right. did it right. Both times, they gave the guy, they had very good verbal command. Guy couldn't do it. No, we, we said we ended this. They did good jobs. With every kind of, they caught a lot of flack when they be messing up. But last right. night, those two did great jobs because both those dudes were about to get hurt, especially with Charlo. My man yeah. ended the fight. <laughs> He's about to kill that dude. Yeah. No, like I said, and credit to PBC, too. They, they knew what they were doing when they made that fight because – Hogan was actually supposed to fight Erickson Lubin in a title eliminator. So maybe Lubin shines the same way Charlo did last night, but Charlo needed that performance because, you know, like I said, he's the odd man looking out at middleweight. So he needs to make a statement every time he gets in the ring. And, and he absolutely got that with Dennis Hogan. He knew Dennis Hogan was going to come to fight, and he was game for the cause. It wasn't like last year when Matt Korobov kind of caught him off guard as a last-minute opponent. You know, he was ready for, for everything Dennis Hogan. You know, Dennis Hogan, he's, he's pretty straightforward, so it's – I, for a fighter as skilled as Charlo, it's pretty easy to prepare for him, but he executed his game plan perfectly. So that's a performance on, a performance on which he can build for 2020. So like I said, hopefully we get that Demetrius Andre fight. I don't know how that plays out stylistically, but it's a nice compromise. It's like you need those fights between the PBC and the, and the zone guy to, to have hope that, you know, we're going to get all these fights we need to see in middleweight because so far all we got is Charlo Jacobs, you know, from, from this year. So we haven't gotten any other real middleweight fight that we wanted to see. Right. That's true. Let me let me switch gears on you a little bit. Yeah. Uh, still sticking with boxing, but okay. th there's been some rumors flying around. You know, this this one guy who who loves to say he's done, but never really done. Uh, what, what's going on with Floyd, man? What's going on with Floyd? <laughs> you know, uh, was it uh, two years ago when everyone said there's no way in hell he's going to be fighting Conor McGregor? <laughs> It got to a point where I was like, you know what, it's it's an absolute, you know, once Conor McGregor said he was serious about boxing, like, he was like, all right, well, this is the absolute type of, you know, low risk, very high reward that Floyd would want. That was enough to bring him out of retirement. For now, I'm just going to say, I think he's trolling. I mean, I think he's going to do business with, he's going to do business with Dana White at some point. But, you know, Dana White was supposed to be in boxing two years ago. He was supposed to be in boxing early this year. He keeps putting pictures up of, of Zuffa boxing, or Zuffa boxing, however you pronounce it saying that they're ready to take over the industry. And, you know, all we've seen is, is an empty boardroom on Twitter so far. That's That's been his boxing enterprise. So I, I just, you know, the, like I said, the timing of that tweet, I just found it bizarre. I found it even more bizarre that, you know, Floyd was the promoter of Deontay Wilder's fight, and he's sitting there trolling, saying he's coming back in 2020. It's like, go promote the heavyweight champion of the world, man. That That's that's your job this week. Not to fucking lie to people and say that, you know, you're coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think he's going to come back in some capacity. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I believe oh. there's something going to be something about Floyd in 2020. He keeps talking about this world tour. I think that's maybe the comeback we're going to see. 
It's going to be a bunch of exhibition fights where he's going to make, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars for that. I, I don't see him getting back in the ring unless it's that fight. I'm not going to mention it. We know what fight we're talking about, though. But that one fight that's going to make him, you know, a, a multi-billionaire. Beyond that, I, I don't see any real comeback coming in 2020. I don't want to because I want to vote him in the Hall of Fame next year. And he's eligible. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so his fight, did his fight against McGregor, Start? Did his clock start there? Did he start? Does, does it start from Berto? Oh no, it, it does start from. It was a sanctioned fight, you know. The Nevada State Athletic Commission blessed it. They said it was an official fight. So, but the Boxing Hall of Fame actually changed their guidelines. It used to be you had to wait five years after retirement, so now it's three. So that's why we got Bernard Hopkins in, in this year. But uh, so yeah. Floyd will be eligible next year. But it did start from the the Conor McGregor fight. So that's why 2020 is the first year he's eligible for the ballot. Got you. Does, yeah. does it trip you? Out? I didn't. I, I didn't see you. You were not out. Uh, what's the last fight that you've been to in person? Man, I, yeah, I know. I don't get to cover too many, so I, I, I'm the B side on boxing scene, you know, unfortunately. So I'm not quite the star. So. I, I see you know, all the time. I yeah, man. Last night. yeah, man. Uh, the last fight I was at was, um, I, man, I, you know, it was when Jamel Herring won the title. I, no, I'm sorry, that's a lie. Devin Haney in New York City when Devin Haney made his debut out there, and I was there, you know, Amanda Serrano and um, and Heather Hardy. So I got to support my girl Amanda. Gotcha. But, but, but we lost ask you is because Floyd is, is Deontay's quote unquote promoter and he only shows up on fight night. Like what promoter gets away with that? Yeah. And then the elephant technically his guy, then it show up to like late Wednesday slash Thursday morning. It's like how can you promote a multi million dollar fight and yeah. do that and it's acceptable? Yeah, I, I guess Floyd feels like he just throws money around and tells the staff, you know, this is the job you got to do. And, you know, God bless Leonard Elliby, man. I love that, man. He he, get, he doesn't get nearly enough credit for, you know, the job he's done with Floyd throughout his own career. And he, you know, I guess, you know, it's it's easy to sell Mayweather promotions than Elliby promotions. But we all know, you know, Leonard is the hustle behind that company, you know, and the whole staff behind him as well. You know, Crystal Frost and the, and the whole team. But I, I guess, you know, Floyd just feels like he could just show up on fight night. But, you know, for what he's doing, though, the way he's trolling even Deontay Wilder, it's like they got whatever beef they got. It's like I've always made the argument, why would you want that negative energy around them? You know, if Leonard's going to be the one hyping it up and being positive, just carry that Mayweather branding, you know, without Mayweather actually there. So I'm, I'm, I'm fine with him just making his appearance. You know, if people want to jock him and, you know, you know, put the camera on him on fight night, so be it. But, you know, at least the attention's in the right place when he's not there. Yeah, that's true. That's true. If he if he does come back uh, mm -hmm. for I guess you know one more fight, I don't, I don't know why he would come back for for an official you know real sanctioned fight. Who who is that one person that you that you? Right, we, we, we know who it is. Come on, man. I mean, Manny Pacquiao is. It, I'm not going to say he's running through the whole PBC roster right now, but you know they can't beat him. You know he he, he was supposed to be Broner and he did. He wasn't necessarily supposed to be Keith Thurman and he did. Especially with, you know, Errol Spence, you know, I hope he's continuing to get better. I hope he comes back soon. But just everything he's been through, can we say definitively that he's going to beat Manny Pacquiao in 2020? So if Manny Pacquiao can get at least one more big win on the PBC circuit, that's def that's undoubtedly going to be the fight that would bring Floyd out of retirement. Come on. You, you, don't, want to see, you don't want to see Conor McGregor, too? You don't want to see that? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm good, man. I, 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 don't, I don't want to see Habib either, so. <laughs> What's your take? I know you're more of a appearance uh, boxer, boxing guy. What do you take a take on like people like um, Jorge Masvidal who wants to fight uh, Canelo? Canelo, to his credit, it's like I respect what you do, bro, but you're not gonna get none of my glow and get get some of this loot off of me. Nah. <laughs> you talking about these guys coming over to boxing and him going over to MMA? No, the, the guy, the MMA people trying to come to boxing because for the money. Like Jorge Masvidal is a great MMA fighter, yeah. but he's an MMA fighter, not a great boxer. Yeah, I, I'm very casual when it comes to MMA. I don't even know if he's a great MMA fighter. I mean, you know, he's the, the baddest ever ever on the planet, I guess, right now. <laughs> you know, whatever happened with Nate Diaz. But, man, come on, man. You really want to see these guys come over to boxing? Come on, man. No, I, I'm actually – I'm real sick of that whole thing because yeah. it's like 99 times out of 100, the boxer is going to beat the MMA fighter in a boxing ring and vice 100%. versa in the MMA cage. So yeah. – why are we like? Why are we still doing this? Like, just be honest about it, straight up. Be like, hey, I want the bag. I want the bag. Right, yeah. And, and right. trying to make it seem like, oh, it's going to be a competitive fight. Like, no, you want the money. Right. I mean, that's the thing. I I didn't give any attention to that YouTube fight that they had, you know, last month. I didn't write one single article on that main event. I wrote about Devin Haney. I wrote about Billy Joe Saunders because they're real fighters. But at least they fought each other. It wasn't like you know one of them was fighting Billy Joe Saunders. So. If these MMA guys want to come over and fight each other in boxing, you know, that's fine. But, no, I, I don't need to see Floyd run through the whole UFC roster. That's nah, – you, you can miss me with that, man. Come on. Come oh, on. Yeah, that would, that would be something that would, that would get old real quick. 
Yes. I mean, the, hell, the Connor fight got old during the fight. Because right. and, and that was the perfect storm. I mean, there was so much money to be made in that fight. I mean, they, they did a masterful job of promoting that. So, I mean, I can't see them duplicating that again. I don't know if, you know, uh, Khabib, you know, carries that kind of, no. kind of note. I, I, I don't know, man. I, I just, I, you know, you can only fool the public so many times, man. Yeah. I think, I think that was <laughs> a one and done thing right there with that. Yeah. Especially at least, at least with Floyd being the, being the, the boxer side of it. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's just not. It's just, you know, I, I would like to see something with Canelo at some point. Maybe I don't know who that perfect guy would be right now. Canelo's but above all that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Canelo shouldn't do it by any means. No. <laughs> I was like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, Floyd, Floyd can stay out of it. Floyd can stay home. Take, what's your take on Canelo's legacy? And so he's a great fighter and could go down as the best Mexican fighter of all time. But yeah. my problem with Canelo is, why, when are you going to fight somebody that you older than? And, like, how are you going to be, quote-unquote, the best fighter of your, of your generation when you technically has not fought anybody in your generation? Everybody he's fought has <laughs> been – if you want to consider Triple G and his eight-year age gap in his generation, okay. Yeah. Danny yeah. Jacobs, you know, <laughs> but other Jacobs and, like, people like James Kirkland, who's been remotely in his age bracket – him to get this club that, you know I, I guess that's a fair question but i mean think about it. i mean who is i mean who would be the young guy that you want him to fight though i guess that'd be my question right there. I think andre charlo okay and then yeah, all of a sudden now people are like because canelo got about 175 he's a full 175er mm -hmm. how dare he go down again past 168 come on now <laughs> they stop all that you know canelo's a 175 he's too big for them like yeah. canelo's like for Earl Spence, I say Earl Spence when he's not when he's not um, cutting weight. He's yeah. not that much bigger. If anything, Earl is probably physically stronger than Canelo. It's right. Canelo's bigger because of the way he's built. But it wouldn't be like he'd be able to bully him like Earl probably could have done had he won to against Mikey Garcia. It, it wouldn't be like they shouldn't be in the same ring together. No, I, I agree with that. I mean, like I said, that was a fight Earl was calling for for you know at least a year, to my knowledge. But here's the thing: I don't hate on Canelo for it's for the same reason I don't take away from what Floyd was able to do, you know, back in 2013. Everyone said that, you know, Canelo was too young. I mean, well, hell, Floyd was in his fifth weight class. 36, you know, 36, 36 years, years old. old. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, like I said, I don't take away from Floyd. That's part of Floyd's legacy. So, I mean, if you talk to just about any boxer, man, you know, I don't believe in pound for pound too much, but, you know, when you ask him to put together a pound for pound list, Canelo's almost never any lower than two. Every boxer in the in the, in the, in the game respects Canelo. So, I, I don't see how we can question his legacy. I mean, he... he if there's a first battle Hall of Famer right now, it, it's absolutely Canelo. I would put him in again, you know, ahead of just about anyone else in the game right now, besides maybe Floyd and, and Manny. But um, you know, I, I think we are going to eventually. He's going to have to fight either a Charlo or an Andre or even a Caleb Plant or David Benavides, especially if he wants to fight at 168. You know, there's not a lot of 168 pounders over there on the zone that he could fight. You know, he might fight Billy Joe Saunders next. I think that's actually a very good test too. A lot of people sleep on Billy Joe. He, he looked like crap in his last fight, but. Yeah, I and think Canelo gonna get him up out of there. We like to believe that, but every 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 fighter I talk to whose who's, uh, opinion I, I respect, they say Billy Joe Saunders is the problem for every 168 pounder, every 168 pounder on the planet. But that dude, he's he's got a, a different kind of skill level, man. He, he's tough to solve. I wouldn't I, I wouldn't guarantee a Canelo victory in that. Who do you think about? What do you think about better beat this and play? I like both of them. It's yeah. kind of crazy they're gonna eventually show down. I, I'm fifty fifty. I like both of them personally. I like yeah. both of their smart, their fight plans, and they're completely different. Yeah. And then the whole like better beat has got that young hunger. Yeah. And then it's like I'm hitting my stride. You can't touch me. Three <laughs> hands ain't just the name. That's like it's crazy. Like I love that whole dynamic. Yeah, I, I love the fact too. They generally don't like each other either. It's it's not quite as uh, not, the animosity there isn't quite as much as like you know maybe Tony Harrison and Jamal Charlo. But they just th those two dudes do not like each other at all. They they see each other as the biggest threat to you know the to ruling the 168 pound division. So that's a fight PBC knows they have to make. So you know um, Benavides has uh, Abney Yildirim coming up in um, I guess in January or February. I, I don't know how true it is. Caleb Plant's supposed to be fighting Alfredo and Gulo. I don't. <laughs> I hope that's not true. He's gonna, he gonna hurt him. He is, man. And I, I like both of those dudes. You know, Caleb is for uh, Caleb's from around the way too. So I've always been a big fan of his. I've known him since he was an amateur. So you know, I'm rooting for him to go all the way. But uh, like, Benavidez and Caleb Plant, man, that's that's definitely a fight I, that has to happen in 2020. You right? You good? <laughs> you trying to touch me? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> okay, that was good. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, Kendrick over there just touching away at the screen. Yeah, they were playing like virtual. I don't know. <laughs> Y'all crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 who's your fighter of the year for 2019? What, what a couple of things you can see in 2020. Fighter of the year, man. That's a good. I, I think you know, with Andy losing yesterday, uh, if Andy won, it would have been a slam dunk. He was undoubtedly the fighter of the year. So right. I, I can't see how you not give it to Canelo. I mean, you know, he beat Danny Jacobs, he beat Sergey Kovalev. Neither fight was the fighter, the fight of the year, but it, it's hard to hate on that. You know, he won a middleweight belt, he won a light heavyweight belt. I, I, I can't think of anyone who's had a more spectacular year. Honestly, boxing truly become a global sport, and these bigger money opportunities are now outside the United States. So. Maybe we get that big event with him and uh, Billy Joe Saunders, you know, and it, you know, it wouldn't be the same, you know, single the mile feel out in England, I guess. But, you know, I don't know when <laughs> that take place. But, but again, I mean, that'd be Canelo taking that risk. Though. I mean, you know, that's what we were talking about earlier, how he had that one fight with Rocky Field. And, you know, that was his his introduction to the zone. But then he fought the second best middleweight in the world in Danny Jacobs, you know, uh, probably a top 15, top 20 all time great in Sergey Kovalev for his you know first fight at 175. Now he's going to fight one of the best middleweights in the world for his next fight. Possibly, you know, if it's Billy Joe Saunders, really any option he has for his next fight is going to be one of the best. So, uh, you know, credit to Canelo. And, you know, I, I just hope everyone else doesn't stand in line waiting for him. It's like once he makes his decision, we have to see these other fights fall into place. I don't really think he's going to fight overseas, though, because that's too much of his Mexican fan advantage he'd be giving away. He ain't yeah. a fool. He, and it's like he needs the money. <laughs> he, he, he's not Andy Ruiz. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree with that. I yeah, I mean, but like, but like we said earlier, though, I mean, he's making his guaranteed thirty-five million from the zone. So if Eddie can say, "Well, I'm going to pay you another fifteen, twenty million if you come to, you know, Anfield Stadium over here and, you know, in England and fight either Callum Smith or Billy Joe Saunders," why wouldn't he want to do it? I believe him when he says he's at the point of his career. He wants to do things in his career that he's never done before. He's never fought outside of North America before. So why not make that world tour? You know, while he's he's only going to be thirty next year, so he's. You know, I, mean, I don't know if he's in his absolute prime, but you know, he's still young enough to where he can take these types of risks against the fighters he's been facing. Oh, age-wise, yeah. Faskin age, I, I disagree because I think I legitimately think Canelo says after the zone deal, he's done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah. he's, he'll be like 33, but his 33 is like, kind of like a LeBron James. It's like right. he's going to post to high schoolers. So yeah, no, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, starting, you know, your career at 15 years old, of course, you know, you're going to, you know, uh, hit your promise. You know, I think from what from when he fought Cotto up until probably the second fight with Triple G, that that was probably like the absolute best Canelo that we've ever seen. So right now we're, we're kind of seeing, you know, not the optimal prime, but you know, like the the tail end of his prime. So and twenty twenty, I think we'll probably see that'll be like his his great you know final victory lap. After that, you know, maybe he'll start to cherry pick a, a little more, you know, and he'll have earned that right. But I I don't know, maybe I, it's false hope on my part. I think we're going to see something from Canelo next year that we haven't seen in his career, and that could be an overseas fight or just the type of risk that you just wouldn't expect him to see him take. I agree with you. I was at Canelo Cotto. That's the best Canelo I've seen. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people say because his head movement and stuff against Jacobs, but that right. was the best from the bell to bell action Canelo I saw was against Cotto. That was a masterful performance that people yeah. do not talk about often because he didn't get the knockout. But that right. was like the technical. He looked. That's why I highlight he could be that guy. That's when I started realizing like yeah. he could be special. He's not all hype. Or as we yeah. like to say, there's no special effects. Right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, you know, Cotto's one of my favorites to us. You know, my wife's Puerto Rico, so I mean, that was the, a week before Thanksgiving. So that's all we had to hear about at Thanksgiving table was how, you know, Cotto let everyone down. But I, <laughs> <laughs> that's a rough conversation. Man. <laughs> but no, nah, I mean, that, that was a masterful performance. And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, what we saw Saturday with Anthony Joshua. It's like, you know, we didn't get that knockout performance. We didn't get the fight of the year. But we saw everything that Canelo had to do to become middleweight champion of the world that night. Just like, you know, Joshua had to do everything he had to do to become heavy, you know, unified heavyweight titleist last night. Well, yes. Yeah, but it's different, though, because uh, Cotto's yeah. a future Hall of Famer. Yes. We don't know about Eddie Ruiz's. Yeah. No, definitely. And, and like we said, Joshua, there. Yeah. Joshua was arguably the best heavyweight in the world, you know, before June 1st. So he, he's not there yet. So, you know, he got his titles back. He doesn't have a status yet back, though. So, you know, Canelo can't say that, though. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of questions to answer in 2020, man. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see it all unfold, man. Jake, man, we appreciate you coming on and spending some time with us on the Slip and Dip podcast. Yeah, where can yeah, all, where I, can all the people find you? Let them let them know where all you work. Obviously, the, at the boxing scene. Where else? Where else? Okay, so I mean, I exclusively write for boxingscene.com, and then just on Twitter, you know, at Jake in the Box, J A K E N D A B O X, and then on Instagram, it's the same thing, just with the underscore at the end. So, but yeah, for all my writing, catch me on Boxing Scene. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs>